cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Alright, so if it's done, do you boys want me to go and see it? The... I mean, hang on, let me, let me refresh. Let me go and have a look. Lucky dude. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Enigma is like made up of the cool, made up of the cool guys that met like and and you know like all these like Attic kind of stuff that were actually. Uh...
Welcome, everybody, to the Temporium Weekly number 10. I'm Presby Kennedy, joined today by Mad Stats. Mad Stats, how you feeling? I'm feeling very good. Uh, Presby Kennedy, I hope it's the same for you. I'm excited to cast these beautiful games today. Yeah, this is our first time casting together, so it's yeah, going to be super hype. You can just refer to me as Kennedy for now on if you want. Uh, I know my name's a whole mouthful or a whole mouthful and a half. We got some great Tim Tim matches coming up for everybody today. If you've been tuning in to all the streams going on in the different places in the Tim Tim live area of Twitch, you've uh, seen some of the contenders today going ham in our tournaments. And like always, Temporium, we strive to bring you the best of the best, the greatest content we possibly can. And the people who have fought through the Swiss rounds today are going to be uh, playing in the semifinals and finals of this tournament. For our first game, we have Markin LP versus Arkham Knight. And for our second game, we have Thunder Lazy versus Quaslix. Mad Stats, are you familiar with any of these players? Uh, actually, with all of them. Like, definitely played against uh, pretty much all of them in the ladder. And, um, I mean, household names in the tournament as well. Markin LP going uh, 4-0, actually. The only one uh, who didn't lose a game yet uh, in the Swiss. Everyone else with a three and one. Um, very excited. Good players in here for the semifinal. Back when we were using the Tintin Masters bot on the Temporium GG for rank matchmaking, I actually went against Mark and LP inside of a match, and the dude is vicious. The dude <laughs> is vicious. So uh, very excited every time I get to watch one of his matches because I know what it's like to be on the other side of a uh, decision making against uh, him. And then same thing with Quasi Quaslix. I didn't I didn't fight against Quaslix, but I uh, casted Quaslix's matches last week. And I just love that Quaslix doesn't conform and kind of like brings their own style to each game. And it just makes me hype for both of these matches. So we are getting ready for game one. And I believe that's going to be Markin LP versus Arkham Knight. Let me see if I can start spectating that. For myself. Oh yeah, he is spectatable. Aha, all right. Yep. We are jumping yeah, into band. this uh, into this game one. We are in picks and bands. And I will try and give everybody what is happening in picks and bands. Uh, as both players right now are debating their first ban, we're going to see Arkham Knight ban out Markin LP's Gyalis. And we see Markin respond quickly with the Gyalis ban on Arkham's side uh, for himself. We have a Terteru pickup by Markin LP and Terteru getting a buff in the patch 5.16, the spring, the first half of the spring update. And we'll see what Markin is able to do with that Terteru. And Arkham Knight picking up a Volarin for his first pick and debating a second pick, hovering a Volcrane. Yeah, I mean, uh, Gaia's ban, <clears throat> actually a classic. I mean, we know it, you know it. Um, Tetaru, interesting pickup, but like, not an easy to counter Tam. I mean, only mental attacks are effective against him. And the only Tam I see on Arkham's side that has that to offer is the Kino, actually. So he's hovering it, he's thinking about it, if he wants to pick it up. Because I didn't play too much uh, of the new mana, but I actually played against uh, Tetaru's like when the ranked mode came in, and <laughs> the guy banned my Kino, and that Tataru was a real threat because it was buffed up a lot, and I couldn't like hit any effective attacks against it. So really interesting pickup. Yeah, Tataru is such a monster with such a high amount of base stamina too. Picking it as a first pick is going to give it some time to just sit on the field and <laughs> get away with a lot of things. We have the pick a pick pickup by Arkham Knight. And Mark and LP is going into their second pick now, hovering that Kinu, but uh, running two supports is doesn't really have to feel pressured to pick a support this early as he opts to pick the Volarin. The two birds. I mean, <laughs> you can't go wrong with a Volarin. Also, yeah, that. and I mean, isn't Pigapack like half a bird? Do we have a sitcom in the making right here? Two and a half birds. Do you see a bird? Like two and a half birds. I can't. Yeah, I can, <laughs> I can live with that. All right, we're going into the second bands. 
Mark and LP is debating banning a Whiplump uh, off of Arkham Knight's team. Whiplump, a very powerful Tim that brings a lot of freeze freeze pressure and a lot of special damage to a team. And uh, just looking at Mark inside, doesn't seem like he has a whole lot to deal with that other than his Volarin. I mean, this iPad probably has a Toxic Ink maybe, but still i mean like whiplam is one of these temps like when you play against it i like really hate to play against them because like they're always like so annoying but when i play my whiplam it always sucks so <laughs> it, it right. probably is the player but <laughs> right there with you uh we're gonna see the ban on Cypat actually uh mark and lp banning out arkham knight Cypat and arkham knight banning out the grandpa and picking and mark and lp responding quickly with the Cypat pick a pack pick and a Rise Kinu pick for Arkham Knight and Whiplumps for both uh, Mark and LP and Arkham Knight being picked up. The rush. We are getting into game one of Mark and LP versus Arkham Knight for the uh, semifinals here. What are we expecting to see turn one here, man? So considering what they have on the field, they're not like threatened to put anything off. I mean, the Volument will probably just stay for both of these, uh, no matter if it's anaerobic or aerobic. I'm uh, gonna see them trigger their trait. Other than that, like, I mean, as I said, like, the only threat there is to Tateru is the Kino, so maybe Arkham thinks about swapping that in, because it also would give a buff to his Volrent. And yeah, for Mark and LP, it's the classic fight against the Volrent pick a pick. It's annoying, and <laughs> you gotta go through it, so... No one needs to swap, actually, but interesting to see what they will try and think about. Yeah, when you're not running like an electric temp for all of these wins, which... Oh, oh and we're getting into the turns. We see Pick-A-Pack use Bamboozle on Arkham Knight's Volarin. Mark and LP's Volarin comes out with a Noxious Bomb onto Pick-A-Pack, dealing a nice tiny bit of damage and pick a -Pack snare triggering on Mark and LP's Volarin. And Arkham Knight's Volarin attacking with the Noxious Bomb on its Teteru, and it's going to reveal itself as an anaerobic Volarin on Arkham Knight's side. Teteru with a perfect jab into Pigapack, just uh, testing out that defense and slowly lowering it. So Arkham Knight has a sweatband on the Volarin, so pretty classic item uh, option here for the anaerobic Volarin. So it can basically stay on the field for the whole game if it wants to. Um, yeah, both. As I already said, try to uh, get up that special defense, become a real tank. Um, I didn't see what... <laughs> become a real tank as opposed to the fake tank. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even tankier, even tankier. I didn't even see what Pika Pig snared of Boulder and uh, so, yeah, no idea if it maybe was a sweatband. Uh, other than that, good prediction by Mark and LP that the Bamboozle would probably come out on the Boulder end and going all in on the Pika Pig of Arkham. Yeah, and with that uh, perfect jab, most of the time if you're running an anaerobic bowler run, well, a lot of bowler runs in general now are just running, not just bomb. So yeah. this uh, Teteru bowler is going to be able to just get in a nice tiny bit of work with the bowler run getting tanky and the Teteru backing it up. But a hypnosis coming out from the pig pack on the Mark and LP's bowler run puts it to sleep. Arkham Knight's Volarin with the Noxious Bomb on the Ter Teteru, just dealing the nice little bit of damage it can. Yeah. Teteru with a major slash on Pigapack, dealing so much damage! Knocking out the Pigapack, taking the Fainted Curse, and Teteru is looking at the Volarin now like, you want some? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Damn. I mean, also like going all in on the Pigapack, taking a Fainted Curse, and now to keep him coming in, uh, as I already said, like, yeah, it's a threat to Tateru, but I mean, Tateru is so low, everything will basically kill it now. But it's a buff on the goal rent. That's never bad. That Tateru is so cute, but so monstrous with a... What a phenomenal start to this game on turn two, knocking out uh, Pigapack, and that's a huge deal. There's no more bamboozles on Arkham Knight's team. Interesting to see now, though, if uh, Machina P wants to stay with the Tateru. He doesn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna see Mark and LP switch out to Teru and bring in Pigapack. Kinu with the beta burst, likely targeting that Pigapack slot, uh, going to deal a small bit of damage, just under 25% HP. 
Volaren on Arkham Knight's side with a Noxious Bomb onto the Pick-A-Pack slot, uh, dealing a nice little chunk of damage too, dealing over 25% uh, HP. I think that was uh, 28 or 29. Definitely was a good amount of damage. And now, I mean, clearly he only wanted to attack that slot. Uh, I think Mark and P knew that this was going to happen because why would he try to wake up the Volrent? Not the Volrent is so, uh, uh, Mark and P's Volrent can't be up most again. Uh, so at least for this turn. So let's see what will happen. Mark and LP's pick a pack with a hypnosis of its own onto the enemy Volarens, uh, stalling it out. Kino with the beta burst from Arkham Knight side into pig at pick a pack and the pick a pack tanking that pretty well. Volaren with a noxious bomb from Mark and LP side onto Kino, and that deals a nice little chunk of damage to it. And I, it appears that the Volaren's anaerobic. Yeah, we already knew that, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah I, yeah, I didn't did, see uh, its first, yeah, stat in the change. First, in the first, um, uh, when he attacked Pika Pika in the first turn, he uh, also took a Noxious Bomb. It's new but... information to me, <laughs> Mad Stats! I'm so sorry, dude! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, Kinu swaps out uh, on Arkham Knight's side and Ray's our rise comes in and demoralizes, bringing one stage of speed down. Pick a pack with the bamboozle on itself on Mark and LP side, and Volaren with a noxious bomb on the raise and not dealing a huge amount of damage, but still getting tanky. Also, like the term before when the pick uh, of Mark and LP hypnosis the Volaren, that probably was like really important because uh, Volaren might have chosen to. Um, go in with the uh, toxic attack with the toxic plume and this might have actually killed pig without triggering the fame curse so my kind of piece got to be careful here rice usually should be slower than the volorant so he might uh, be good with the bamboozle but um, yeah he should maybe think about swapping it out if he just wants to make sure that the fainted curse doesn't go to waste here yeah, and both of these Volarens for the start of this game going uh, unanswered. And uh, the sleep on from Mark and LP onto the enemy Volaren is just kind of giving it time to be full stamina. We're probably going to see it for like another five turns here. I mean, Hypnosis is just the best answer to the Volaren to the enemy <laughs> If you don't have like, uh, let's say, a good uh, attacker like... Um... Tuvine or Gaelis, and I mean, Gaelis is always banned, so not much <laughs> you can do with it. All right, Arkham Knight's Volarin triggering the bamboozle, oh. the pick a pack with the perfect amount of speed to re bamboozle itself. Eats Rise's attack, triggering the bamboozle again, the pick a pack taking no damage this turn. Volarin on Mark and LP's side, resting so it doesn't have to overexert to keep attacking in right here. And <laughs> well, turn six happened. Well, um, Machina P has a big problem though, as I already said, the Volaren might still, uh, or even Rice might even uh, get it with uh, Ambers burn, so uh, Fainted Curse might still go to waste, but the other problem he has is that all his temps that he could choose are basically pretty much affected by the Volaren's toxic attacks, uh, which are Psypad and the Whiplump, and Tater Root will probably just die, so all his swap options right now are pretty bad. And this Volaren has no need to come off the field. Yeah, Mark and LP letting the time tick away as he tries to think of a solution uh, to stay on top of this game. Uh, I feel like he's uh, saying right now, just don't tell me the numbers. Right now, the pick a pack for Mark and LP switching out. Psypat coming in, going to have to face down this Volaren. Volaren with the toxic plume on Arkham Knight's side putting one tick of poison onto the Psypat. Uh, the Psypat's running Tunka Mass, so that's not going to deal much damage. The Rise with the Roar and the attack down on the Psypat, and the Psypat's almost useless, just swapping in already. Volaren on Mark and LP's side with a Feather Gatling into the Arkham Knight's Volaren, not going to deal a huge amount of damage. I mean, great prediction here from Arkham Knight. He knew that all the swap options like wouldn't also be affected by Rise a lot, so he just chose to use the Roar. Get the attack down, and he got Cypher good with that. I mean, he would also have gotten Taitaru good with it as well. The only 10 that could have been swapped and who wouldn't have been infected would have been the Whiplum because he goes more with special attack. Nicho Sai coming out from Saipat, going to be hitting into Arkham Knight's Volaren. 
not dealing a huge amount of damage from that attack stage down. Uh, Arkham Knight's Volarin responding with the Noxious Bomb, dealing good damage onto the Psypat. And a King's Roar from Rise as it's running both Roar and King's Roar, lowering the speed of this Volarin and the attack of the Psypat and the speed of the Psypat too. And a Noxious Bomb coming out from the Volarin on Mark and LP side into Rise, uh, not dealing much damage as this Rise has kind of negated these two Tims. Yeah, Arkham is in a pretty good position from my point of view right now. I mean, his Kingdom lost a little bit of health, but everyone else is still going going strong, going good. This Volorant now on fully buffed in special defense, so not much any Tem could do against it with special attacks. And I mean, Psypad and Volorant lost much of their attack power, so they're also not a big threat. I mean, Psypad didn't put a lot of damage into Arkham Knight's Volorant. Yeah, that Nicho Sai uh, was pretty much a tickle stick. And uh, not the thing you want to see out of your Psypat. One of the great reasons you run Psypat is because it's such a good counter and can bring like a, a good amount of damage to a team. And when you're not countering anything, you're not damaging anything, it just kind of makes you think about what other options are out there. Also now going to be interesting to see if Marken just wants to stay with his Volaran and just let it be exhausted. Um, I hope my stamina bar is right here. I don't think it has 0%, but it, I think it overexerted. So yeah, he has to think now if he maybe wants to use his pig to get a faint curse off somewhere, or um, yeah, if he probably just let it cyber die. I mean, that's what will happen if it stays on. So uh, really important turn here for Marken. Yeah, Markin is up a 10, but if we uh, press X, we can see he's down in stats all across the board. The Whip Lump, his last uh, completely healthy Tim, is going to come out to the field, taking a Toxic Plume from Arkham Knight's Volarin. Uh, but the Whip Lump does not need its... Oh, <laughs> oh and its Snare is going to catch yeah. that Volarin! With a Embers from the Rise onto the Whip Lump, the Whip Lump swapping in and taking almost half of its HP, but dealing so much uh, to change the board state on just a swap. That swap was... I mean... Arkham didn't do anything wrong. The Toxic Plume was a good decision here. Like, if Tateru or Pika Pika come back in, it should, like, basically be getting them both pretty low. But Whipplum with the Snare actually doing a big job here for Mark and LP because Volorant lost its uh, sweat band now, and now is at least not as big as a threat as it was before. Yeah, I feel like there should be some cosmic level brain meme for Mark and LP right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, snare on Pigapack is regular brain. You want your Pigapack to get hit, you want your Pigapack to die. But snare on your <laughs> Whiplum? Who does yeah. this? <laughs> That's like a really weird option. I've never seen that before. I mean, I I do it on my rice mostly if I, I feel playing with a snare. So, yeah, like support times, I mean, that's the usual kind of stuff, but on a Whiplum. But if I think about it, it's not that bad of an option. I mean, if you already use your Tokma Mask on the Psypad, there's not too many good options. I mean, you could still use Hand Fan, but still. Yeah, Rai is going to swap out for Arkham Knight. Wimplump coming in to take its place. Wimplump with the Tornado onto that slot, going to deal just under 20% damage to that enemy Wimplump from uh, Markham LP. And Volarin with a Feather Gatling, and it all in all, it's going to be a lot of stamina used, but not a lot of damage coming out for it. Yeah, I guess he hoped a little bit for a Kino Swap here, but his options were pretty bad for both swaps, so... He he tried to predict it, he didn't use a Water Attack on Whiplum, I mean, that's already, like, a little win, but it didn't yeah. work out in his favor. Yeah, I completely agree. I'd be interested to see what this Whitplump is running. If it's, you know, not a full-out special attack attacker, getting some sneaky, like, um, sneaky swap to set up, like, a Teteru for Turbo uh, and getting another major slash off could inch Mark and LP back into this game. But at this point, it feels like he's just trying to hold the Floodgate out. Mark and LP actually lighting the Floodgate down as he... Tsunami's the enemy team going to deal a little bit of damage and start that freeze pressure. Another Tsunami coming from Arkham Knight's Whip Lump across the whole team and it's going to have that same synergy and now it's going to be on who has the speed investment and who has the speed tie as both, both Volarin's rest for the turn. 
Yeah, sadly, my stamina bar for Machina piece Volorant is bugged. It says zero percent. That can't be true. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, like the the interesting part right now, like I still feel that Arkham has a little advantage, but Markin still has the pick. So Arkham Knight needs to be very careful with the taxi that he doesn't actually like attack into the fainted curse, especially with his Volorant who's already so buffed. If he would just lose 48 percent of its HP, that would be huge for Markin. Yes. And you are a hundred percent right there. Uh, one of the things, though, to remember with that um, pick a pack, though, it's in that awkward territory where it might not die from one attack, though. Yeah. The Rise swapping in for Arkham Knight, taking the place of that Volorant. It's going to be the first time we see Volorant swap out this game with a uh, whip lump with the tornado onto the onto Arkham Knight's whip lump. Arkham Knight's whip lump with the cold breeze onto the Volorant, and that's going to be a freeze on the Volorant. And Volorin spends its turn being frozen. Question's gotta be raised here. Did, does Mark and LP's Whiplum not have Cold Breeze? Or did he expect the Whiplum to swap out? But if he expects the Whiplum to swap out, I would have expected a water attack on Rice. But yeah. Yeah, very, very interesting levels of thought that uh, Mark and LP is playing on right here. As Whiplump and Mark and LP side swaps out and Pigapack swaps in, going to be tanking whatever attack this is coming. Rise swapping out on Arkham Knight side and Volorin swapping in to take its place. Oh. Uh, Volorin on Mark and LP side swapping out and Teteru swapping in to take its place also. A cold breeze from Whiplump onto the Pigapack, not going to be enough to kill it, but it's uh, going to lower its HP a little bit more. And now Tadru is back on the field, but the question is, is it fast enough to survive? Or is it faster than Whiplump? That's even a question. Can he actually do something here, or will he just be swapped out again because Markin realizes that he probably will die before he can actually pull out an attack? Yeah, I just know if it was for me personally, and I was running a Teteru focus on damage, um, it's all about the surprise. Once you reveal it once, if you want it to be viable, it's got to be able to keep getting in there. So personally, I would run it with attack and speed, but who knows what this Teteru has invested in it. As uh, the Teteru, looking so innocent and cute, but we know it's holding on to that major slash as it had one turn to get a hold on it. And Pick a pack. have it for this turn. Yeah, take a pack swapping out for Mark and LP. Volorin coming in to take its spot. Whiplump with the cold breeze on Teteru. The Teteru's going to live it. And the Toxic Plume on the Volorin. The Teteru's not going to be fast enough to get off one final attack. As Good the Teteru, yeah, faints and Pick a pack comes in. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Good swap though that he got a pig out. Oh, that was really important because pig might have died from the uh, toxic tick from the toxic bloom. So he still got the faint curse option here, and that's really important if he wants to win this game. Yeah, that pig a pack on the field is going to be kind of pushing all of these attacks into Volarin, which means the pig a pack could. Get a bamboozle off on itself and extend its life on the field if Mark and LP even wants that. Uh, but the Whiplump, if it, it's got one turn, I suppose. What do you think about that? Of like using Tsunami, um, if it, you know, kills the Pig a Pack and That's takes good. the Fainted Curse. I would take that every day, all day, if, if I would be Arkham Knight, because I mean, the 3%, he's basically already dead. Getting, getting the pig off and just not getting the um, Fainted Curse on the Volorant is like basically a win for an Arkham Knight, in my opinion. Because even yeah. though he doesn't have the Sweatband anymore, he still has the 5 times special death buffs. And there's no Tem on Markin's side that can actually hurt it. Pigapack swapping out from Markin LP. Psypat swapping in to take its place. A tornado from the Whiplump onto the Psypat is going to knock out that Psypat and kill it. Volorin with the Feather Gatling on Arkham Knight's side, attacking into Mark and LP's Volorin. 
It's not going to deal a huge amount of damage. We'll learn with Noxic Bomb. Noxious Bomb onto the Whip Lump on Arkham Knight's side is going to bring that Whip Lump uh, down into a range in which the Volarin might be able to kill it next turn if it doesn't swap. Yep, the Toxic Plume should definitely be enough to get it off the field here. Um, let's see. Okay. So we got a mirror now. Um, I actually think though that Arkham Knight might probably take off the Whip Lump and just get into Rise to like get another speed debuff in. Yeah, that Rise is still on the back burner there as this Whip Lump for Mark and LP switches in. And I feel like for so long, Mark and LP has spent this game uh, trying to just hold back Arkham Knight and keep himself in, in ahead in this game. And he hasn't really been advancing his strategy. And like, if you look at the stats and you press X, Volarin is has so many minuses, minus three stages of speed, two stages of attack, five stages of special attack, uh, Pigapack has negative speed and Whiplump has negative speed, whereas Arkham Knight has just kind of been playing consistently and he's got Tims that are a little hurt, but overall he's in a pretty good position at this uh, late point in the game. I think Arkham Knight could just swap in Rice and Keanu all day and just get the Volarin completely buffed out of this world and just get all the speed debuffs he can if he just wants to because I think Volarin can just basically <laughs> solo carry this game as long as uh, yeah he gets to need he needs to get a little bit of damage uh, on Mark and LP's Volarin but he can still do that with um, the Feather Gatling for example. Yeah, as both of these as both of these tamers are debating their next move we're going to see where the attacks land in as the field is kind of a mirror matchup except for those negative stage uh statuses or stat changes that i mentioned earlier whiplump for arkham knight swapping out and just like you called that raise coming in to take its place the demoralize is going to lower the speed of mark and lp's team but a sharp rain might have been predicted on that oh. raise and it's going to hit that raise and it lives 1.4% a noxious bomb from Volarin on Mark and LP's side as he double target fires that raise and that raise is out of here and it's a 3 Tim game to 3 Tims. Finally something working in the favor here for Mark and LP actually that was a very nice prediction here with the water tag getting that raise off so there's still a chance. I mean, Kino has a lot of problems to deal with the Volarin, for example, because the Noxious Bomb does a lot of damage to it. And also the Whiplump doesn't want to be attacked by Volarin or, like, say, by a Cypad, so... Yeah, Volarin swapping in for Arkham Knight here as Arkham Knight thinks and tries to decide what he's going to do for the rest of this game. And we're back to the Whip Lump Volarin. The stare down. We back. Yeah, Whip Lump Volarin. And this time, though, it's looking a little bit different. Um, as Mark and LP still has those speed, uh, those speed downs, which is going to make his life much more difficult. I think if Mark can doubles up, he can kill... Or if uh, Arkham Knight doubles up, he can kill Mark and Whip Lump. But I don't feel like Whiplump's the huge threat right here. The thing, though, is what will Mark can, like, do with the Volarin? If my stamina bar is right, it is pretty low, so um, he would have to overexert to do an attack this turn, so he might just think about resting it here. So, I mean, he needs his Volarin to be active and he can't take another overexert. Whiplump on Arkham Knight's side with a Tsunami, not going to deal huge amounts of damage to that Volarin as it hits both Tim's and Arkham Knight with a Feather Gatling into the enemy Volarin, choosing not to target down Mark and LP's Whiplump, and Mark and LP's Whiplump's gonna respond with the Tornado and kill Arkham Knight's Whiplump. And, and uh, this that turn big. of resting. That turn of resting was big because he now can still use his uh, toxic attack on the Kinu. Problem though is his Mark and LP's Volarin is slower than Arkham Knight, so if he says, oh, I'm just gonna feather gatling you again, Mark and LP's Volarin will be down here, so he won't get off the attack. The question though is, 
Magnapil Mark still has the pick a pick, and that might be like a factor why Arkhamnite thinks hmm, maybe I don't want to attack the Volrent because he might swap in the pick here. So this turn is now big brain time. Who is gonna outbrain the other player here in this turn and maybe even win the game off a smart turn here? Yeah, and this is this is the moment where you have to think. What is your opponent going to do? And you have to predict and react to that. And sometimes the answer is in these big brain situations is to go with the dumbest move possible of the one they never expect. Or maybe yeah. the swap is the uh, is the option here. I always go one hand in these times and like on ladder you always lose because of that. But in tournaments, just because like everyone is overthinking everything, you might actually work it out with just being stupid. It really is <laughs> that way. Yeah, so we will see what Markin decides as Arkham Knight is also is Arkham Knight is also staring down this situation and seeing is this the moment he takes game one or is this the moment where game one goes to Markin as uh, a lot of stakes are tied up right here. Kinu with the hypnosis going with the safe play onto the Volarin, putting the Volarin to sleep before he can do anything. And the Volarin on Arkham side is going to target the Whiplump with the Noxious Bomb, uh, dealing it or killing it outright. He overexerted for that though, so he can't attack in the next turn. And I'm not sure that Kino will have the damage to take down Volarin, but Kino might have the damage to take down Pig and just eat the Fainted Curse. And then we have a one versus one between Volarin and Volarin, and I think. Arkham Knight's Volorant is ahead in that case. All right, turbo choreography from Kinu on Arkham Knight's side. Mark and LP knowing that this is going to come down to a speed tie with the turbo choreography of his own trying to get his Volorant back into this game. The Pig of Peck, that was a very smart move for Arkham Knight, both with the hypnosis and the turbo choreography not letting this pig pack have the freedom to out bamboozle and maneuver around these enemy Tims. Yeah, but I think because he pulled off the turbo choreography as well with his pig, that he might still be able to outspeed the toxic plume from Volorant and actually bamboozle himself. And that is the important part. The pig pig is not allowed to die to the toxic, uh, to a toxic take. If this happens, it's it's over. The Pigapack is able to hypnosis the Volarin, putting it to sleep. Volarin on Mark and LP's side is attacking into Arkham Knight's Kinu. It's going to deal a nice chunk of damage, but it's not going to be enough to kill the Kinu. Right there, though, Arkham proving that his Kinu is going to outspeed this Pigapack as the Kinu now has hypnosis back online. If I didn't miscount the attack of Mark and LP, though, another Noxious Bomb is still not enough to kill this Kinu, so... If it would be, that would be huge for him, but the revitalize on the Kino actually like put Arkham Knight in a pretty good spot because he won't lose uh, his Kino to like just one attack from Volorant. Pegapack with another turbo choreography, increasing its speed even further. Kino with the hypnosis. Let's see which slot that targets as it targets down the Volorant, going to stall out the Volorant for a turn. Both Volorants choosing to rest this turn and get some stamina back. This but is that a hypnosis shootout now. <laughs> yeah, but that Pigapack now is at plus three stages of speed. The Kinu can't be put to sleep, um, and it has a chance of its own if it wants to respond with the turbo choreography. But uh, yeah, that Pigapack is <laughs> kind of... Uh, we said earlier, you know, Markin could have thrown it away and got some good damage um, off on it, but that Pigapack's like the thing clinging him uh, back into this game. This game is still open. As long as all four of these Thames are on the field, everyone's still got a chance to win. And that's crazy if you consider how low Mark and LP's Thames are in this situation. Pick a pack with the bamboozle on itself, overexerting to do so. Uh, Kinu with the beta burst is going to uh, break that bamboozle oh. and a feather gatling from Arkham Knight's, uh, from Arkham Knight's Volorant is going to kill Mark and LP's Volorant. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen. That's man. it. Game one going to Arkham Knight. 
And what a game we had here. I mean, it already looped over after the first few turns, but... Magna Piece somehow got back in there and made this a really close finish. Yeah, I, I agree. Mark and LP took the lead for that match, but then Mark and LP uh, kind of just held on, uh, or rather didn't advance his strategy any and just tried to stay in the lead, but not move himself any further in the lead. Uh, what are you hoping that we see in game two, man? I mean, like, if I, if Mark and LP had the choice, which he sadly won't have, uh, he should and the Volorant, but that would leave a Gaelis open, which is basically not what you want to do. So, um, yeah, I just uh, hope that um, Magna P maybe, like, finds a key here and uh, maybe takes something out of game one that I couldn't see and uh, tries to play it out in the pick and ban and just, yeah, brings up uh, a win for himself in game two so we can actually go to a third game. Yeah, Volorant is such a huge tank uh, when it uh, runs its anaerobic buff and just there I think for a good 80% of that match Arkham Knight's Volarin was just on the field throwing down noxious bombs and yeah. the snare to get rid of the noxious bomb was great on that one turn but it just definitely a huge MVP there of uh, that Volarin being expected to be on the field and also what's now happened is that the Bookman doesn't have the surprise factor anymore with the snare. Like now Arkham Knight knows that it has the snare, so he's got to revisit his ideas. And we're actually already into game two, so we're in pick and ban. All right, let's jump into it for game two of Mark and LP versus Arkham Knight. We are going to see Mark and LP has banned out Dialis on Arkham Knight's side and of course, the gentleman's ban of Arkham Knight banning out Gaelis, uh, respectively. Moving forward from there, Mark and LP's picked up Grandpa and Whiplump, and Arkham Knight has picked up Volarin and Psypat as we go into the second ban. And Arkham Knight is uh, thinking about a second Tim to ban out. Yeah, we're actually seeing something new here from both sides already. I like that a lot. And we're also getting the Grandpa in here, uh, which is a totally interesting pick. Another Hypnosis for Mark and LP, so... Um, uh, it's gonna be a sleepy one, guys. <laughs> yeah, and uh, like you said, Arkham Knight reading that and banning out pick a pack, uh, just denying one more Hypnosis user from Mark and LP. Mark and LP's uh, ban went towards Rise, not letting him have that, not letting Arkham Knight have that speed control this game, as Mark and LP picks up Volarin and Arkham Knight picks up pick a pack. And Arkham Knight is debating their fourth pick. I really like the ban on Rise here because all the other options Arkham Knight now has are like options that have a lot of problems to deal with all the times Mark P has or can pick, so good situation for him here. Yes, and like you said, kind of putting pressure on that Volcrane pick uh, for Arkham Knight and yeah, you really don't want to run a Volcrane into a whip Lump and a Psypath as uh, that bull crane would get deleted very quickly. The thing that's like, I just now realized since I didn't play the last week of Temtem, like where the hell did all the crystal towns go, dude? Like, <laughs> <laughs> holy, like back in the days Wait. when I was playing, everyone was having three crystal towns and now all you see is Gaelas, which is banned instantly. <laughs> Yeah, where the hell did the crystal tins go? It just, it's Hypnosis users uh, being able to outspeed them and stall out their damage, and Volarin's being able to tank it for a turn or two. Yeah, the meta definitely evolved, and that's happened without even new temps coming in, which I think is pretty interesting. If you're just tuning in, we are in game two of the semifinals. Mark and LP versus Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight is up one game as Mark and LP tries to bring this either to a 1 1 or uh, their tournament run ends here. Mad stats. What are we looking at for game one or for turn one here between these two players? So, if I had to choose a ch side which won the draft, I'm probably on Mark's side in this game. Uh, he might still have big problems with the Volrand, and uh, yeah, we see that Speaking of here. which. The Whiplump switches out for Mark and LP. Volarin swaps in. Grandpa with the Wind Burst onto Psypad, and that's going to deal a huge amount of damage to the Psypad for uh, how tickly Wind Burst can be. Volarin with Noxious Bomb onto Grandpa, oh. and Psypad with Toxic Ink onto Grandpa, and they're going to deal a huge chunk of damage to the Grandpa as it is almost out of the game already. 
Yeah, uh, throw everything I wanted to say be turn before turn one out of the window because uh, Arkham Knight actually naturally predicted that uh, Markin would take out the Whiplump here because I mean you don't want to face two toxic type users with a Whiplump and uh, would bring out something that wouldn't be affected by it and that's why he just directed both his toxic attacks on the Grandpa and basically nearly killing it. So Grandpa, if he's not being swapped out here, he should be dead because uh, one hypnosis won't hypnose both of these temps. Yeah, and one of the uh, fears here is uh, anything swapping in for that slot, let's look, is going to take a pretty big, hefty chunk of damage as that's likely going to be the slot, slot that gets targeted. Kinu swapping in to buff up this Volarin is going to put defense and special defense onto the uh, onto Mark and LP's Volarin. Arkham Knight's Volarin swapping out and the Kinu coming in and buffing up the Psypat, the Psypat with the Toxic Ink onto the Kinu slot, and that is going to be enough damage to take it out next turn with those poison ticks. Volarin with the Noxious Bomber from Mark and LP's side onto Psypat. Uh, that is not going to be enough to uh, kill the Psypat without uh, more investment. You know what's actually like really interesting, what I just thought about? Like, Mark and LP naturally took out the Articuno, the Whiplump here, because he didn't want to be attacked by the toxic attacks, right? But his Whiplump has Snare, and Arkham Knight knows that, so he probably wouldn't have attacked with the Volarant anyway. I mean, it's not that Articuno uh, Whiplump could do anything here against these two, but like, maybe there was a little mistake in there, and now he's like under the same problem as he was in the game before. He always has to swap his temps out, but everyone is somehow affected by toxic attacks, which is just a bad spot to be in yeah like you said this volarin is uh one of his only answers to toxic tim right now and uh the volarin's on the field and <laughs> arkhamite's just ignoring it one of the one of the issues with running anaerobic volarin is yes it gets so tanky but if you don't have anything or any pressure to kind of like force attacks into it it Volarin just kind of sits on the field and just throws out noxious bombs in the background. And it's honestly the most annoying time to deal with uh, in the game, basically, in my opinion. Um, I mean, Gaelis is also always really annoying to deal with, but it's more because of its attacking force and not because it's just a tank that can stay on the, day, uh, on the field all day long. And um, yeah, there's just no answer to Volarin. I mean, even the temps that should answer it, which are electric temps, can't answer it because there's like only good special attacks right now in the game. So Volarin is basically untouchable uh, till the point where one good electric attacker comes in. Kinu signaling its death is going to turbo choreography, uh, giving that Volarin plus two speed. A ninja jutsu coming out from the Saipat, uh, killing the Kinu. That Kinu had to have some crazy. Oh no, yeah, plus a <laughs> high priority for that turbo choreography and hypnosis from Kinu on Arkham Knight's side onto Volarin, but the Volarin's running, I believe it was an energy drink that stopped it from being put to sleep. That's as, gotta uh, be it. Yeah, as uh, Volarin's going to take out that side pat with the Noxious Bomb. And that energy drink, I mean, we didn't see it in the first game because Volarin instantly lost it to the snare of the Pig a Pig, but now we know it is a snare. Uh, now we know that it's an energy drink and all the Hypnosis attacks Arkham Knight wants to put it in Volarin, won't stop it as long as it's not losing uh, the energy drink on the snare. And... Yeah, and this is one of those scary situations now. It's 5-10 to 5-10. The big thing now is Arkham Knight basically has to get a good swap in where he gets in the pig and Volarin loses the energy drink because of how important Hypnosis is to stop a Volarin. So that's going to be interesting to see with uh, how Markin deals with that and how he predicts uh, Arkham to play out the pick here. So my guess would be that Arkham Knight should try to swap in the pick. But the question is, does he swap it in on the Volorant? Because Volorant, Markin LP feels uh, threatened by the swap and doesn't want to attack the Kino because this would be the more sensible spot to get the Kino out and not hit by Toxic. And we're getting into big brain scenarios right here. Grandpa on Mark and LP's side going to be swapped out for Whiplump taking its place. Kinu with the turbo choreography choosing to stay in and Volarin 
on Mark and LP's side into Arkham Knight's Volarin with a uh, Feather Gatling. Arkham Knight's Volarin with a Hyperkinetic Strike onto Whiplump, but Whiplump going to tank that so well with its Wind and Water typing. And the Snare. The Snare hit the Volarin again, so the Sweatband is away. It's down. That's, That's big. big. That is so big. And at which point <laughs> did Mark and LP like know that oh, this this grandpa's getting attacked not by the Kinu, but by the Volarin? That's a huge like next level read. And uh that's gonna that's gonna net Mark and LP a little bit of breathing space this game as Volarin swaps out on Mark and LP's side and the grandpa comes in to take its place. Kinu with the hypnosis onto Whiplump is going to put the Whiplump to sleep. But the Feather Gatling from Arkham Knight is going to attack into the Grandpa, and that is going to be enough to kill the Grandpa. I mean, Market probably did expect the Hypnosis coming in on Whiplump here, because why should um, Arkham Knight thinking about Hypnosing an uh, energy drink Volorant, but he probably didn't think that Volorant's Feather Gatling would kill his Grandpa. That's why he probably swapped it in here, and it did kill his Grandpa, so really unlucky. Yeah, really unlucky there indeed, as Mark and LP is sitting with a whip lump and side pad on the field. The thing that's hugely different about this game, though, is last time when we saw side pad swap in for Mark and LP, it was dropped to about 55% HP in turn one, had its uh, speed lowered, and then turn two, while it was on the field, it had its attack and speed lowered, and it just couldn't do anything for the rest of the game. So this time, let's see what Mark and LP's side pat's running. He's definitely in a better position than he was last time. And also the swaps that might happen here, Pega Pig or Whiplump are also... Yeah, they don't want to be attacked by a toxic gang of side pads, so... Not the best swap situation uh, Arkham is in here. You don't want it, but uh, regardless, it's coming as Kinu swaps out for Pega Pat. Psypad attacks into the Pikapak with the Toxic Ink, putting those two ticks of uh, Toxic Ink on, and the Psypad's going to be hit by the Pikapak Snare. The Volarin resting for a turn, and the Whiplump waking up at the end of the turn as it is ready to start throwing down some special damage and throwing out some freezes. So the good news for Mark and LP are that, um, I mean, the Pikapak swapping was more sensible here because Whiplump would take the Toxic Ink even worse than uh, Pig. But the good news for Mark and LP are that is that um, Mr. Volorant can't lose its energy drink anymore because the snare is dead. Yeah, and that Volorin, we've already seen how these Volorins can just come out to the field and sit here uh, forever. Arkham Knight's really going to have to think about how to answer Mark and LP's Volorin. We saw last game how Mark and LP with inches just took the game all the way down to the final couple turns before it was really decided on who won. So Markin just has a tiny bit of space to play, but still an upwards uphill climb. Volarin with the Noxious Bomb onto the side pad, it's going to deal a huge amount of damage. And we're going to see Whiplump with the Tornado back onto that Volarin, but it is anaerobic and that Tornado is going to actually deal a decent amount of damage considering how defensive it is. Side pad with the oh. Nitro Scion to the Volarin, and that is going to deal a huge chunk of damage as the Volarin's almost out of there. The Pigapack bamboozling itself, but Pigapack, you're not that special. The Tens on the field don't really care about you right now. Don't be so selfish. <laughs> 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 yeah, this was actually a nice turn for Markin. I mean, his cyber got hit hard, but that's the thing you expect from a no uh, Noxious Bomb from a Volarin. But he actually got a good need to sigh off on uh, Volorant and he could get it off because he didn't lose all his attack before he could even attack this time around. And um, yeah, as I, as I just thought about the first game, as we didn't know that Machina Peace Volorant had energy drink, just think about Machina Peace Volorant still having energy drink in this last turns of the last of the first game. I mean, he was uh, hypnosed like two times, so if he had energy drink there, his Volorant might have actually done something and could have won him the game. So Markin is in a better position than he was last time, especially now that the Volorant of Arkham is so low. Arkham Knight's Volorant is going to swap out. The Wimplum coming in to take its place. 
Saipat swapping out for Markin LP and Volaren on his side coming to take its place. It's got energy drink. It's got full HP. It's a monster. Pigapack with the hypnosis onto Markin LP's Volaren, but it's energy drink is going to prevent that. The cold breeze coming out from Markin LP's Whiplump and putting those two tets, those two ticks of cold onto Whiplump. And the freeze pressure is now here with no hypnosis counterplay available for Arkham Knight. Yeah, and Markin is now in the position you want to be as a tamer. You have a Volarant. This Volarant can't be affected by all the hypnosis attacks. This Volarant is effective against the Whiplump Arkham still has, against the Kino Arkham still has, and it can also deal re really good with his Volarant because it's already so low. And I mean, the Pig a Pig, the pick a pick is now just there to bamboozle something and maybe try to get Arkham over the finish line. Whiplump swapping out for Arkham Knight. Kinu coming in to take its place. Pick a pack with the turbo choreography, gonna try and get itself back into this game with one stage of speed on each of those Tims. Noxious Bomb from the Volren coming out onto the Kinu, and that's gonna deal over half of the Kinu's health. It cannot tank another one of those as Whiplump continues the freeze pressure as it puts down a Tsunami this time, which is going to put one stack of, or two stacks, three stacks of cold on each of these Tim Tim. Dan, yes. can can we get Mark and LP to turn on his web camera? Is this man dabbing right now? <laughs> is he dabbing on this I dabbed final right now because I was so hyped. <laughs> No, but like, that's probably the turn I expected from him to do here. Put out the Noxious Bomb on the left side, because whatever comes in there will be hurt, except for Volaren. It might survive, but, I mean, it wouldn't survive the both attacks, I guess. And the Tsunami also dealing a nice amount of damage to Pig a Pig as well, so... There's basically nothing Arkham can do right now. Mark, uh, Arkham can do it now. Markin can just spam the left spot with Noxious Bombs, and... Yeah, Whiplum, just attack something, do something as well, and yeah, there's no attacks except for the Volarant's attacks right now that are working uh, for Arkham against Whiplum here as well, but the Volarant is slow to do anything, so what can this man do? It's so terrifying right now because the Whiplum has so much stamina, and the Volarant has so much stamina, and all of the answers for Arkham Knight are kind of like out of the bag right now. I, there's the small chance that maybe the Kinu can outspeed the Whip Lump and freeze it before it, or hypnosis it before it gets its freeze off, but it's still the fact that <laughs> the Volaren is there with the Noxious Bomb. Kinu with hypnosis on the Whip Lump puts it to sleep, but Volaren with the Noxious Bomb on the Kinu is gonna kill the Kinu. Take a pack with a bamboozle onto oh. the Kino slot, but not going to be fast enough to outspeed the Volaren. Yeah, he maybe thought he could outspeed it with the turbo he put out, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, and that would have been such a huge turn for Arkham if it uh, had paid off for him. As uh, we consider what Tim Arkham is going to bring in next, opting to go with the Whiplump. And I mean, this could this this could work out. It could work out, but we have one important or Markin also has one important information. His Noxious Bomb will be faster than Pigapig's Bamboozle, so the Noxious Bomb will always come off on the whip bomb and will deal a huge amount of damage, so no need to uh, change strategy right now, just go all in and hit <laughs> up this whip bomb. Volaren is Noxious Bombing again onto the Whiplump slot as it deals almost perfectly 50% of the of the Whiplump's HP. The Whiplump with the Tsunami onto both the Whiplump and the Volarin is going to deal uh, just a tiny bit of damage, but that Wind Synergy is going to put the cold stacks out there. Yeah, and all Marken now has to do is just get a little bit of damage from your... Um... Whiplump as well on uh, Arkham's Whiplump and just put up another Noxious Bomb. I mean, he can maybe think about resting his Volarant here for a turn so he doesn't overexert. It's also an option. Because he's in no rush to finish this game. His Volarant is full life. His Volarant can't be hypnosed. This piece of bird is untouchable in this game. So, um, <laughs> from my perspective, it's over. Yeah. Uh, like you said, enemy Volarin on the other team with such low HP, 
The Pegapec, not a lot it can deal with its wind damage into the Bolarin slot. The Whiplump is a special attacker. Not a lot it can do into the Bolarin, who has such high special defense at this time. All Mark and LP's got to do is use that other slot to just help and support out this Bolarin. And uh, just hope that he's able to uh, get that tiny bit of damage on a Whiplump. The last thing Mark and LP would want is for that Whiplump to live with 0.5% HP and and uh, possibly freeze stall his Volaran while Pigapack Hypnosis stalls the uh, Whiplump. The only problem though Mark can basically has with if my stamina bar is right here, I mean, if I look at the stream, it seems to be, oh yeah, it seems to be higher, so he can take off a Noxious Bump, okay. okay. Yeah, I've so got- the stream is behind, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've got Volaren on my screen at 3.6%. Yeah, I have that as well. Uh, I okay. think it's the smarter move to rest here because like, he doesn't want his Volaren to be overexerted. When Arkham Knight's Volaren come out, he wants to be able to do, at least for the Gatling, to just kill it and get it off the field. Yeah, and that, that is a really fair point. As uh, Volaren actually, <laughs> Mark and LP says, screw you, mad stat, I'm <laughs> going for this noxious bomb. He's gonna hit with the Noxious Bomb and the Whip Lump. Mark and LP's Whip Lump with the Tornado on the Arkham Knight's Whip Lump is gonna be enough to take it out. And that is it for Arkham Knight's Whip Lump. Pigapack opting to rest this turn. Volaren swapping in for Arkham Knight as Arkham Knight is on their last two Tims and they're on slivers of HP as Mark and LP is threatening to take this to a game three. Yeah, even though his Volaren now has to rest because of overexerted, I still don't see this game taking a turn in the other direction anymore. I mean, okay, there's still a threat coming from Volaren for uh, the Whiplump and the Cypad, but still, I think uh, Mark and Peace Volaren could even like solo this uh, if he wanted to. All he basically has to do is just uh, have Whiplump or Cypad get off the Pega Peg and get it done with. Turbo choreography coming out from the Pigapec on Arkham Knight's side. Volaren on Arkham Knight's side with the Noxious Bomb. That's going to hit into the Whiplump slot and that's gonna deal a huge amount of damage with the Whiplump living with 6.3% as the Whiplump responds with a sharp rain onto the Pigapet. And it's not enough to kill the Pigapet. Oh, it would have been so great if Mark and LP could have that fainted curse onto his Whiplump. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a turn. Yeah, but still, uh, Mark and LP's Volaren should have Toxic Plume, and he might even be fine to just eat the Fainted Curse with the Volaren now, because he would still be ahead a lot in HP. The only problem he has right now, though, is actually Arkham Knight's Volaren is pretty much full on stamina, and he can be able to uh, deal with uh, Whiplum and Cypher easily, so... I said the game is already pretty much done, but since the Pigapig is still there and Marken needs to find a way to deal with the Fainted Curse, uh, there's still a slight chance Arkham can turn this around. Yeah, it's a terrible shame that that uh, Volaren outspeeds Whiplump right there, as uh, this game isn't uh, decided until that Pigapack gets handled and the Psypat um, is able to do one or two things. I believe the Psypat will still have nin Ninja Jitsu online. So it has the potential to outspeed, um, it has the potential to outspeed maybe the Pigapack, but uh, all of these turbo choreographies sure. on, yeah, Arkham Knight's team, plus four speed on the Volaren, plus three speed on the Pigapack is going to make it really dicey as another Noxious Bomb comes out from Arkham Knight's Volaren onto the Whip Lump. It's going to be enough to kill it. And, uh... Mark and LP's Volaren rests as the Pigapack also rests. Also, the big problem now is that Pigapack's Bamboozle could potentially stop, like, even the attack from Volaren from Mark and LP. So, this is, again, a time where both players have to outsmart each other and uh, think about what will the other do and what I need to do and then this whole shenanigans begin. It's like basically playing like rock, paper, scissors and you think, okay, he knows that I pick rock, but that's because he knows he will pick paper, but he also knows that I know that I will pick rock. So that's probably why he takes scissors. And 
your brain just explodes and you just take maybe the wrong decision here. Pick a pack with the bamboozle onto the Volaran is going to give the Volaran a uh, time to move as it's Noxious Bomb outspeeds the Psypat. It's going to be enough to kill the Psypat. The Psypat is out of there and this game is on to the Volaran as it Feather Gatlings into the pick a pack opting uh, to take the Fainted Curse. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a game. <laughs> yeah, it's a Volarin versus Volarin. Mark and LP's Volarin has more stamina, has more HP, but Arkham Knight's Volarin has a bamboozle and has more speed. It really, yeah, it, it's it's going to be oh, dicey. Both rest. Both that... Volarins opt to rest. Uh, that that bam bamboozle is gone. And uh, I believe that's going to give this game slowly to Mark and LP as long as they don't overexert to keep attacking each other. Yeah, I think even with the 4 times speed buff, the Hyperkinetic should still be not strong enough to one-shot Mark and LP's Volorant. So if he just chooses the Feather Gatling here, he should win this. Yeah, and as we know, though, from uh, the Tim Tim coding, Whatever Tim Tim knocks out the other first, even if they overexert to kill uh, themselves to do it, uh, is going to be declared the winner of this game. Yeah. And I want to say something real quick. I saw Dan ask in chat, what's uh, everybody's favorite milkshake? Everyone who didn't say chocolate is dead to me. Just absolutely dead to me. Okay, <laughs> Kennedy, then. <laughs> Kennedy just killed me, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 uh, no, I'm kidding. Everybody can ignore it. I said that. But yeah, it's out there. <laughs> it's out there. Feather Gatling from Arkham Knights. Uh, Volarin is going to be attacking into Mark and LP's Volarin as Mark and LP responds with that's the it. Feather Gatling. And that's it. Game two goes to Mark and LP as it is 1 1 in this series. GG's in the chat, boys. GG, indeed. I love the adjustments Mark and LP was able to bring to that game. And <laughs> I love the adjustments Mark and LP was able to bring. And I love how strong Arkham Knight played all game long. This third game is going to be it of who moves on to the who's done and who moves on to the finals of this tournament. I mean, is there anything you're hoping to see in game three? Match. I just want another close match. I mean, we basically now had a match two times, uh, just reversed basically, where we both were agreeing that one player definitely won, but then the other player made it a close game again, still lost in the end, but still like both games looked like completely over, like in the mid game, but in the late game, the other player always came back. I just want that again. Give us a tasty game. There's <laughs> a tasty, uh, really, like, Give us a game as tasty as a chocolate milkshake, and we will be happy indeed. True, that's true. <laughs> I mean, chocolate is up there for me. Just like I just really <laughs> like, I just really like strawberry milkshakes. I don't know what it is, but I also like strawberries very much. So that is fair. As we're uh, waiting for game three to start, both of these players have made adjustments uh, in their strategy and going into the pick and ban phase and going into. The opening of each round, we saw different plays uh, come out from Mark and LP. And we're going to see if Arkham Knight has the same ability to adjust. The, the, the really interesting part now is, though, that Mark and LP basically is forced to um, pick his Whiplump into, uh, in the first um, pick and ban phase just to get a snare in. Um, I don't know how important it is for um, Arkham Knight to get his pick a pick with the snare in, in the uh, first pick phase because I think there's a lot more, more threats uh, that Markin could actually ban out. But like the Volorant with a sweat band would be huge. Like to actually have it for a full game for Arkham Knight. I mean, his Volorant in the first game had the sweat band basically for the first half of the game and we saw what it did with it. And um, yeah. This time around, they lost it pretty early, while uh, Mark and LP could just go ham with his Volorant and the energy drink. Yeah, and I'm able to start spectating the game now, and I completely agree. One of the things I think that's interesting about putting that snare on the Whiplump 
is that Whiplum might actually draw a ban with how well yeah. Mark and LP has been playing with it, which opens up Gyalis, which opens up Kinu, which opens up Pigapack, which opens up Bolorin, um, all to be on ban going into this game if uh, Arkham Knight decides that. And we back. Mark and LP with the opening ban onto Arkham Knight's Bolorin, as Arkham Knight is now deciding what to ban. And are, are, are we going to see a Gyalis Gyalis opener? This is going to be interesting. This is going to be really interesting. Yeah, Arkham Knight right now really hovering that Gyalis, really deciding if he wants to give it to Mark and LP, but also hovering that Volaren as both Volarens have done so much work and both Gyalises go on uh, are open as That's first really pick goes to Arkham Knight. What a what a huge switch up from both players here. Actually letting Gyalis get through and both Gyalises get through. Beautiful. Both Gyalises get through, and uh, Kinu is also picked up for Mark and LP, as Volcrane is picked up for Arkham Knight. And we actually get to see the Volcrane here for the first time, so a lot of new picks coming in here in the last game. I like that. Yeah, yeah, this is a completely different opener than we saw for either of these tamers in the game three, as they both have had to adjust to each other's strategy. Arkham Knight deciding with its second band to go onto the Grandpa, and Mark and LP deciding its second band to go onto the Kinu. It's which, going to be interesting. Which gives the option of the race, which I like. It did yeah, a lot Arkham of work Knight for Arkham in the first game. Yes, yeah, so well with that raise. But he might back. not want to Go pick ahead. it because there's like uh, two water types still in there for Markin, so interesting to see. Yeah, and Arkham Knight really putting the pressure on this pick of, uh, of making Markin really decide right now if he wants to run the double water or if he wants to run the single water. Opting to choose the double water. Interestingly enough, uh, Tatoo can run Stone Ball, so is it nah, Stone Ball? Is Stone Ball a threat to Fire Times? It is, right? So yeah, like yeah. Everything he had would have been threat threatening to the Rice. So if Arkham Knight puts up the Rice here, he just doesn't care about that and just wants to have it there for the Speed Debuffs. Yeah, and that Volcrane cannot show its face though when one of those Water Tim is on the field taking four X damage from Water attacks and not <laughs> barely any special defense to speak of that whip lump is a huge threat that uh arkham knight will have to play around as he hovers this rise for his final pick or the or the whip lump uh opting to go with the rise speed control can win you some matchups against sky alice as we get into game three of the semifinals here mark and lp versus arkham knight and I think we will have a faster game here this time around because we don't have a Volorant in here who can, who can just stay in forever and we got the Gyalysis who actually just want to smash the other team. Also, interesting enough, Mark and LP calling his own <laughs> Gyalysis Mark and I love that. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Gyalysis Gyalysis here. I, this is such a scary position to be in. Yeah. Because uh, Mark and LP is going to swap out his Gyalis for the Whip Lump and uh, choosing to stay in with the Kinu. The Kinu, or actually the Kinu, swapping out for Mark and LP too as the Pigapet comes in to take its place on uh, Arkham's side. Gyalis with the Heat Up is going to turn itself online and the Stone Ball coming out from Volcrane onto the Whip Lump is not going to deal much of anything as that uh, Volcrane might have to turn tail and run this game, I mean, or this that uh, next turn. was so big for Arkham Knight. Like, he basically had the scenario already put in when they both picked their first two times because Volcrane is so threatening to Gaelus, and Gaelus, uh, Volcrane also is threatening to the Kino, so it was an answer to both of them. So he knew basically that he will get a free heat up no matter what, because like, even if Kino would stay in to attack the Gaelus with beta burst, it basically wouldn't do much. So, free heat up, that's big. That's really big. Yeah, and that Gaelus is there. Haido Uchi online, Sharp Stabs online, Crystal Bite online. 
The Volcrane swaps out for Arkham Knight. Psypat swaps in to take its place. And the pig Pigapack with turbo choreography gonna give plus two stages of speed to the Whiplump and the Pigapack. Whiplump with a synergized tsunami is going to lay down some damage onto this Gyalis and the Psypat as uh, Gyalis is running an umbrella and not gonna take a huge amount of damage from that. Gyalis with a greedy second heat up. Oh my God. So this Gyalis with how much damage it took and also with the umbrella setup is uh, what we like to call the classic Attica Gyalis with probably the special defense TVs. So yeah, this guy is a tank. The only thing that really can hit him hard is uh, some fire or stone, some fire, stone attacks. Yeah, fire stone attacks. And Marken doesn't have any of that. And now four times attack. And can you take it away? Yeah, Cypat swapping out for Arkham Knight. Pigapack swapping in to take its place. Gyalis swapping out for Arkham Knight too. As Rise comes in to take that slot and is going to negate half of that turbo choreography. Uh, Pigapack with a hypnosis though going to be onto the Rise's slot, putting that Rise to sleep and the cold breeze onto the Pigapet, uh, just starting that freeze pressure on the Pigapet. Yeah, and also mentioning what I just said about the uh, Arkham Knight Skyalis being now untouchable. Um, Arkham Knight put in the rise here to have at least another answer to the Gyalis of Mark and LP. So he has the Volcrane, he has the rise uh, to deal with it. And Mark and LP is basically completely out of options to deal with uh, Arkham Knight Skyalis. Like, what yeah, can actually hurt him? Yeah, it's going to take a big miracle to get that guy Alice online. Um, the Psypat needs to come in and at least get some type of buffs into its speed. And uh, <laughs> the Psypat might only get one attack off before the guy Alice uh, insta destroys it. Yeah, and I mean, the only real answer Marken has is his own guy Alice, but it's two heat ups down now, so interesting to see. Psypat swapping in for Arkham Knight as Rise swaps out. Pigapack using turbo choreography, ensuring that this Whiplump can control the game with the amount of freeze it can put out. Pigapack on Arkham side responding with the turbo choreography of its own, but it's not going to be enough to outspeed this Whiplump. And Pigapack next turn is Whiplump uses a synergized tsunami, and that is going to Ooh. freeze both Tims. Cypher gets out though, so. <laughs> At least the good answer to his whip, to the Whiplump is still there, but yeah, the Whiplump basically is marking a piece, somewhat marking a piece winning condition. I mean, on the other hand, naturally, the Hypnosis attacks are also a good answer to the Gallus to just like slow it down, but the Whiplump needs to deal with Vulcrane and Rise to even give marking a piece Rialus a spot to come in. Yeah, Whiplump going to swap out for Mark and LP. Gyalis is here and it is ready. Pigapack swapping out for Arkham Knight as Rise comes in uh -oh. and it's going to get that speed down. I believe that brings the Pigapack down to plus two speed. Psypat swapping out for Arkham Knight as the Gyalis swaps in and his Gyalis is online already with the Haido Uchi rearing to go. The beast is back to smash and he's gonna smash and now the question rises what wants what wants Mark and LP to do here? he probably wants to swap out his Gaius as well because if Rise and Gaius go all in on his then goodbye but what do you swap in here do you swap in Cypad he will probably die as well do you swap in Kino he might actually die as well so Whiplump well, you definitely don't want to switch in that one Let's not forget, though, an overexerted pig can do a little bit of work, as I believe it still has hypnosis online, and it can use its last little chunk of stamina to stall this guy out at once. And it does. I believe. And uh, Pigapack goes for the hypnosis. The hypnosis is going to outspeed the guy Alice. The guy Alice is stalled for one turn, just allowing that little heat up to happen. And Markin's guy Alice is going to have to turn tail and run before uh, this other guy Alice wakes up. And Embers from the Rise ticks onto Markin Skyalis, but the resistance is going to negate the burn that uh, Markin would from that that Skyalis would get from it. 
Yeah, I completely forgot about the Hypnosis from the Pick a Pick, but still, Gaiatus with the Resistant is back online this turn already, so uh, doesn't need to wait long. And now we have the situation I spoke about. What once? What is Pick a Pick with the Bamboozle is uh, and. <laughs> Oof. Oh, and the guy Alice on Arkham's side targeting down with a a fainted uh arc the crystal bite. I'm what? so flabbergasted here as Mark and LP's guy Alice attacks into Arkham's guy Alice and kills it with a crystal bite. What a what has happened? Here. Market is in it. So Mark and LP bamboozle from the pig pack on the Mark and LP's I... guy Alice is outfitted because of the plus three stages of speed despite the amount of priority that um well no because he didn't use crystal stabs arkham knight's guy alice didn't use crystal stabs and crystal bite is two priority so the speed from the pick pack outsped with the bamboozle the guy alice knew there was going to be a bamboozle going and arkham knight attacked into the pick pack killed the pick pack in one shot with plus four stages of attack but because of the fainted curse, that was all Markin needed to finish taking out that Gyalis as he responded in turn with the crystal bite of his own. I'm 130 base damage. Here, Kennedy, it, I'm losing yeah. my sanity here. Why? Why? I mean, he knew that the bamboozle might be too fast, but why did he? Why on earth did he decide to attack the pig a pig? Like, did he really <laughs> think he was tanky enough for the? Yeah, and. Oh. And who knows as we get into this turn with a Toxic Ink from Arkham Knight Psypat onto Mark and LP Psypat. Mark and LP Psypat responds with the Toxic Ink back onto the enemy Psypat. And with a little bit of help from Gaialis, Arkham Knight Psypat is out of here. And it's a scary game for Arkham Knight now as he's down to three Tims versus four. And most of Mark and's team is pretty healthy, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they are. The only thing that somewhat can explain to me why Arkham did attack the Pig a Pig is because he maybe thought the TVs had another spread and it wouldn't instantly kill it. But like he, why, he like even if Markins Gaius doesn't do as much damage to Arkham's and like doesn't kill it instantly, it would be so low anyway. I mean that was Arkham's winning condition. It had it already used two heat ups. It was completely ready to smash anything. It would be put in front of it, and now it's just dead. How, yeah, how I saw that turn was that Arkham knew his guy Alice would kill uh, Markin's guy Alice, and that, like, that spot was pressured. And so I feel like all of his decision making was like the next stage there of Markin swaps out his guy Alice for something he doesn't care about. You know, the pig pack bamboozles itself to try and protect it from the guy Alice or something of that nature, and then seeing where the game progressed. But yeah, Markin with the, the Bamboozle and the guy Alice sacking the pig a pet, um, that was, it's a great turn for Markin, and it threw him back into this game. Yeah, I mean, as I said, the guy Alice was the one thing Markin couldn't really deal with, and, well, Arkham basically dealt <laughs> for him. Mm -hmm. He dealt with it. Kenu swapping in here for Mark and LP. A tornado from Arkham Knight's pick a pack onto Kenu isn't going to deal much damage as both Rise and Gaialis rest this turn to get their stamina back. Um, I have Gaialis at 1.9% stamina on my screen, but I think that should really be closer to like 20%. Pick a pack with the bamboozle on itself this turn. Kenu with the hypnosis. That hypnosis slot going to be targeting the rays, which means Gaialis is going to rest another turn uh again on my screen i have it at 1.9 yeah, percent but that should be around for me yeah it should be around 25 or 30 percent stamina on it it did it should be definitely able to get out at least some kind of attack oh it happened it's over all right and <laughs> game three is going to go to mark and lp as arkham knight conceded staring down a buff guy alice uh, and a full team still left from Markin. Uh, Markin coming through that game. Moving on to the finals. And Mad, what a game. What a game. I mean, I, mean, I said we're probably going to see a quicker game than the games before, but I didn't expect it to be this quick. But 
Arkham just probably realized that maybe he wanted to do a swap prediction, like you said. So, yeah, I don't know. But if, the moment he lost this guy, Alice, which basically, like, was he had to win in the back with that one if he doesn't uh, run it into the you know, into the pick a pick, and he probably just realized, yeah, I don't have much to deal here uh, anymore. So, yeah, and you know, people will comment so much on the hypnosis meta of like how it can be boring to watch, but like that is that is why the hypnosis right now that game is the perfect example of why it's so uh, prevalent, and it's not a stall tactic. The hypnosis causing that Gyalis to wait for one turn, like that is how you play around Gyalis. You get speed control if you can just push off one of its moves and then you attack hard into it and you get it out of there. And then the game is in your pocket. So excellent, excellent play from both players there. The final match going to Mark and LP. And we have more great matches coming to you as we get into our second match of the uh, day, and then we'll be moving into our finals. I'm actually going to be coming back for the finals as another caster takes my spot. So I've been Presby Kennedy casting with Mad Stats. Uh, Dan, are we going to take a quick break or are we just going to jump right into it? Okay, we're going to take a quick break, everybody, as uh, we swap out casters and we get the next game prepared for you. Let's get some uh, poggers in chat. Uh, what was your favorite play of that last match? And I'll be seeing you later in the day. And we'll jump to break real quick.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to the Temporium Weekly number 10. We got the second semi-final for here ready to go. And we have a little change up. Uh, my name is Matt Sales, I'm still here, but now on my side is the beautiful Potestas. Welcome in. Uh, thank you very much, Matt Sales. And yeah, welcome from my side as well here to this uh, weekly number 10. A whole decade of weekly tournaments here in Temporium <laughs> GG. <laughs> and yeah, you can see uh, what that brought. Uh, actually, a very nice and uh, interesting set, the, the first semi-final that was. With, uh, yeah, ups and downs and a huge comeback from Marking LP. Yeah, and actually a crazy finish in the last game. But yeah, things happen and things don't work out. And uh, Arkham Knight lost his guy. They're pretty unlucky. But we are going into the second semi-final to find the opponent for Mark and LP here in the final. And it is between Thunder Lazy and Classics. So, Potestas, what's your opinion on both of these players? Well, actually, I'm not familiar with Thunder Lazy. Uh, but I know Classics uh, a little bit. Um, I've seen him show up in uh, tournaments uh, all over the place, basically, and he was always a top four contestant. Um, also currently involved in Club Wars, I think, and uh, therefore a very active member of the community still, uh, despite obviously a little bit of uh, a decline here in viewership and uh, obviously also participation. Uh, but he still uh, goes strong, so uh, with Thunder, Thunder Lazy coming in here, um, uh, yeah, we'll be quite happy to see what he has come up with and what he brings to the table here. And yeah, the only thing that I uh, basically definitely, I mean, I know Thunder Lazy's name um, and I definitely played against him. I know that he's from Brazil, so um, Mark and P is from Brazil as well, if I'm not mistaken. So there is the potential all Brazil final. So uh, really interesting. Um, Classics, I know that he's from uh, France, so uh, the European flag uh, still going strong. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we will see how he will uh, fare against Thunder Lazy. Uh, as you said, we haven't seen Thunder Lazy uh, that much on stream, and uh, that might be actually a um, upset for him. Maybe uh, you know, with uh, people looking around and seeing what other people do, Classics has uh, you know much more people looking out for him and uh, seeing what he does. And Thunder Lazy, we just flies a little bit under the radar here and. And bring out some cool strategy or uh, just some amazing plays, I guess. And the pick and ban phase is actually starting just now. And um, yeah, Classics gets the first ban here, banning uh, Volorant from Thunder Lazy. Thunder Lazy now up with his ban. And let's see if he goes for the classic Gaius ban. He does. Yeah, one interesting thing here is not only that both players run Madrids. But uh, also that Thunder Lazy uh, did not bring Kino, and I would say that's uh, really interesting here because uh, a lot of times these players rely on a Gialis Kino combination. Or previously, also there was a Valash and Kino combination with that protector buff, giving these temps just enough survivability to be able to set up once or even twice. And with no Kino on Thunder Lazy's side here. Um, yeah, that, that strategy is basically not applicable. So we'll see how he will play his Gialis here in just a bit. So probably also the reason why Classics doesn't even bother to ban the Gialis here. Um, Thunder Lazy naturally picks it. And the answer from Classics coming in here is a Nudit. And he hovers the rise right now. I don't know if he really wants to pick it, but we will see. He does. Okay, interesting. So Thunder Lazy now with the last pick here for the starting temps. Let's see what he picks here. I mean, pick a pick might be an option to like put a bamboozle on uh, Gaelis, but still you don't want to get hit by the bunny and the race. Now, what is very interesting here is that he open classics open him, opens himself up for massive uh, water type damage. But on Thunder Lazy's side, we see the Cypad and Calabis, and Calabis does not have good water options turn one. And uh, Cypad, well, it, it does no Ice Shuriken, but uh, that with 60 base damage, it's not that most powerful move. And uh, therefore, Thunder Lazy will opt to use Madrid here in the second pick for himself 
instead of a water gem that looks really awesome into Rise and Madrid, obviously. So, uh, we're going into the second ban here, and um, yeah, the Shroom, Masuk, gets banned by Sun Lazy, and Classic now choosing his last ban of this game number one. It's a pick, so pick a pick out. Uh, not really any support options now in place for the Gaelis. Yeah, and Classic just dropping the pick entirely in his team, so doing basically uh, it the other way around than Thunder Lazy with Thunder Lazy having the pick but not Kinu and Classics having the Kinu but not the pick. And to be fair, I do think uh, generally having the Kinu instead of the pick should be more beneficial. But we have seen obviously in the last game how well this Kinu is positioned currently with Hypnosis, with the Fainted Curse. Just an amazing gem overall. And uh, the follow-up here from Thunderlazy is the Cypad and the Calibus, and Classics answers it with the Bird, Volorant coming in. Yeah, as you also spoke about Hypnosis, which I just realized is that both of these tamers don't have, like, a huge amount of Hypnosis temps in the team. I mean, Kino is one, I think. Pick yeah, yes. is one. So that's all, if I'm not mistaken here. Uh, not like the last match, where there definitely were, like, four temps who can use Hypnosis, maybe five. No, but I also think that uh, your team can be set up in a way that A, you can uh, prevent Hypnosis a little bit in a way uh, by having a good amount of tempo and a good, of, good amount of pressure on your side at all stages of the game. And um, also, yeah, these two teams basically are more a little bit tempo oriented and not like setup oriented per se or like the full setup um, and tank teams that we have seen previously. So last pick coming in here from Thunder Lazy and it is the two line actually coming in for him. You spoke about the what attack options that um, Thunder Lazy might have. I mean a classic Tem all the way from the old days uh, was actually like playing the two line with a Shuin Son, but since he didn't pick it I don't think he has Shuin Son on it. Didn't no, pick that it early. I mean, he would still have a lot of damage coming its way if he picked it in the first uh, yeah. actual slot here. And this guy is so pressured, he can't really let it stay in here. Uh, even with full special defense investment, he would be about like 20% or so maybe. Um, and uh, therefore, you know, Thunder Lazy a little bit pressured. Madrid could be uh, pressured here as well. And we will see in just a second here. Thunder Lazy bound to swap something here, I feel like. And Classics therefore needs to adapt his play in order to accommodate for that. And the swap comes in, as you mentioned. Gaelis goes out, Calibus comes in. He won't be affected too much by the attacks coming here, but Classics probably expected that something like this would happen and also swaps out his rise, brings in the bird. Good option against the Calibus, and now just puts out the Mood Shower on the Moodrid. And uh, much harder. And yeah, um, Sun Lazy exactly answers with the same attack, and we see that uh, Classic's Moodrid did more damage than Sun Lazy's Moodrid. Yeah, just a little bit of difference here. Maybe a few points in special defense here on Classic's side, that, uh, or just a little bit more uh, HP investment here. Um, not too much, but. Uh, at this point, it's actually <laughs> kind of mattering a lot, since uh, another Machao on the Madrid would kill it. And with the um, speed drop from the Rise turn 1, Classic's Madrid will outspeed anyway. So, Finalazy needs to swap out his Madrid again after receiving 50 per more than 50% of HP in uh, yeah damage from Classic's side. And his options are also not too good here because the Cypad he could swap in might be attacked by the Volorant as well. And the two vine also probably not the time you want to put into that spot. Other problem is Calibus is also threatened a little bit by the Volorant. But Calibus is fine here. I feel like usually they are on code, have uh, a, bit, uh, a lot of uh, investment in HP. So he will be fine. So the swap comes in, Moodle goes out, Cypad goes in. Mooded from Classics puts out another mood shower and Volorant comes in with the Feather Gatling on a Calibus, which actually does a little bit of damage, but Calibus answers with the Strangle on the Volorant. 
Yeah, and I was wondering if Classic wants to do a uh, kind of uh, double into that slot of the Madrid with a Noxious Bomb. Because you could expect the Cyber to come in, and if it does, the much uh, the the sorry the Noxious Bomb would deal a lot of damage, and therefore you cover all options here. Instead, chipping away on the Calabis, and now the Volorant can't do anything, and therefore Classic lost a bit of tempo here. So Thunder Lazy now um, with a Cyber that can throw a Nitrosai in either slot and be kind of fine. Yeah, I mean, he could also use a water attack on the Moodred, but yeah, Classics maybe thinks about swapping here, and then he actually does swap out the Moodred, brings in the Kinu. Now it's going to be interesting to see what Thunderlazy chose to do with a Cypad here. The buff goes in on the Volorant, and Cypad comes in with the Toxicking, so the perfect prediction here on the Kinu, who will now be under 50% after this turn. And now the Kinu will be chipped away here. Taking a lot of damage, and Cypad preserving his Nitro Sire here. One option, obviously, is to focus down this water range with, uh, for example, Nitro Sire here before it gets so tanky that you can't really uh, attack it anymore. And uh, we have seen that Cypads with Nitro, Nitro Sire just have so much neutral damage uh, that these water ends receive quite a bit of damage, even though they are quite tanky. I mean, the uh, positive thing for Classics here, so he got a little bit of extra defense from the Kino. So Nietzsche Sai won't hit as hard, but it will still deal a lot of damage to Volorant. So interesting to see what the players decide to do here. And Classic can't really uh, preemptively try to heal this Volorant up if the Thunder Lazy would choose to attack the Volorant with the Nietzsche Sai. As with the Kino staying on the field, the Calabus just has a free Toxic Ink into that slot actually, uh, you know, dealing a lot of damage, which is not that common for a Calabus. It's more like they have to apply toxic stacks, uh, toxic the poison condition and you know, tank a little bit here and there. Maybe get on a strangle to stop a Volant as he already did. But Sun Lazy decides to swap out the Cypad, maybe expecting that he might get a free turn here for his Gaialis, which he put in and Classics chose to put out the Kino, bring in the Rise, get the speed debuff on, Gaialis and Calibus. And Volorant can use the Feather Gatling again on Calibus. Let's see what Calibus will do now. He chooses to use Strangle again on the Volorant and putting it down for one more turn. Yeah, and with that swap uh, in the Gaialis, this was the probably the only reasonable play here from Sun Thunder Lazy. He wants to protect his Gaialis as much as possible uh, from this turn. He wants to swap it in, heat up, and then. Uh, have a heated up Gaius from there. But Classics actually predicting a little bit here and getting in this Rise not only drops the speed of Gaius a second time, which means that Rise is actually in the same speed here now as Gaius. Gaius might be still a little bit uh, faster, but not by much. And obviously, with no uh, Kino or alike from Thunder Laser here. And Ambers would actually do a little bit of damage to the Skialis. Yeah, and the players now chose their options as the screen disappears and Volorant tries to use Feather Gatling but Strangle withholds it from that. Rice uses the Ambers on Gaialis. 25% of damage is resistant so it doesn't care. Attack coming in. Heat up now for Gaialis so he got the buff on and we see Gaialis has Sweatband as well so he can stay on for a little longer if he wants to. And notice how the Rise actually went first here before the Gialis, yeah. which is kind of outrageous considering Rise has a really bad speed. So these minus two speed decreases here from the Demoralize putting in work. And therefore, you know, Classics might be able to get a few hits in before the Gialis can even move. And also, like, as long as Rise is there, Gialis will have a hard time. And another. Feather Gatling might not actually kill Calibus, if my count is no. not wrong, but he will be pretty close to death, so really, really hard turn for Thunder Lazy to decide what he wants to do here. It seems like Calibus would survive on one HP, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Which is... One percent. So Calibus goes out, two rank comes in, he doesn't want his Calibus to be put this low. Feather Gatling comes from the Volar end, doesn't do much to two vine. Rise now with another Amazon Gaelis, still going faster than Gaelis. 
And Gaius can now use the Crystal Bite, which should hit the Volorant, and it does, and it does a huge amount of damage to Bird. Yeah, and he's probably going with, like, HP and attack here, I would assume. Uh, with Sweatband, he wants to attack as much as possible, so... Uh, having a HP and, for example, special defense invested Gialis would mean to dish out a lot of damage. He actually would need to heat up twice. And finally, he wants to prevent that. So I would assume that is just HP and attack. Now, very interesting choice here from uh, Klasix to uh, attack with uh, the Burrow into the, now, what's now the two-wine slot. As I would have thought that the Gialis would have uh, been a real threat here. So uh, the swap comes though from the guys. He doesn't want to have it on the field anymore, especially with damage coming from Rice. Noxious Bomb still does a good amount to Calavis. Uh, Volorant over exerts in the process though, and now the Crystal Plume Gatling comes into Volorant, which will do a lot of damage and puts it to 11 HP. Fire Tornado coming out, but on which spot? It comes on the Calavis. Is it enough though to kill it? No, it isn't. So huge attack wasted here on the Calavis. Yeah, Thunder Lazy here. With a very smart swap here, and yeah, Classics pays the price here. Now the Rise not only did minimal amounts of damage, uh, especially considering that is a two-hold move, and yeah, that's uh, quite hard to get back to uh, in rotation again, but also a lot of stamina investment here. We see that the Rise is pretty low on stamina. I mean, Rice would be able to kill the Calibus probably, with an Ambers, I mean, with an Ambers for sure, but is that a situation you want to be into? And, I mean, Volrand being so low and definitely not be able to attack, that's not looking too good for Classic, at least on the field right now. Yeah, I feel like Classic here wants to kind of reset the fight in a way, um, but looking at his, uh, his options to swap here, they don't look that exciting in this uh, particular spot here. Not really, and the Volorant goes out. Ukama comes in. Ukama gets hit by a Feather Gatlin, which does a lot of damage to Ukama. But the Ambers comes out on Calibus, so at least Calibus couldn't put out maybe a Toxic Tech or something on Ukama, and it still is in a spot where it might do something. I mean, it should be the fastest Tem in the game uh, right now, especially with Gaius losing all its speed. Now, this Ukama took quite the beating here, actually, from the True Vine, but in response, Yukama being that fast now can pressure the Tuvine quite well. Tuvine does have a huge defense uh, stat, but not a lot of special defense. So just the Aquatic Whirlwind or uh, alike, maybe a Water Cannon. They do a lot of damage towards this Tuvine. And sometimes he puts out the side pad, which does put out the pressure on Ukama with a Toxic Ink attack. Rice also overexerted for Classic, so probably also not the time you want to have stay here but looking at the options he has it's not looking too bright for classics right now one play classic says here as you uh, stated that thunder lazy for sure has the upper hand and can dictate how the fight is going in this uh, particular spot he can swap in the volorant uh, which would uh, maybe sound a little bit counterintuitive but then the water cannon would have synergy and this two toxic ticks uh, from that attack might actually turn the tide here. But Classic decides to put in a Kino, give a little defensive buff to his Sukama. Sukama putting out the Aquatic Whirlwind on a Tuvine, and it does a lot of damage. There's no special defense investment whatsoever, as it seems. Tuvine with low special defense uh, anyway. And the Toxic Ink comes out on Sukama, putting it to 16%. But since the Battle Gatling comes out on Kino, Sukama survives another turn and might actually be able now to take out Tuvine in the next turn if it wants to. Is that anyway with the toxic tech? And looking at Thunder Lazy's team here, he does not really have to swap in for that as the Cypad is out on the field, which would be the uh, only good answer to the Yukama currently. So we see a uh, Madrid there that would just die from it attack. The Tuvine is in killing range as well. And the Gyal is obviously, he wants to preserve that. And if he swaps it in and gets killed just by a water cannon, would be actually quite bad as well. Now, this would assume that uh, Classics would swap out the Queen Kino here for a Volorant to ensure the two Toxic Ticks. Because I don't think Yaris would just uh, die from this percentage. But, I mean, uh, interestingly enough, the 
buff from Kinu might probably have saved that Ukama. Yeah, like that's right. Maps, I'm not ra uh, wrong, so... At least that going right for Classics. And then obviously with the Madrid being able to kind of, you know, check the Gialis as the Gialis is at minus two speed and very slow. Madrid will go first and therefore do a lot of damage towards the Gialis or the Madrid uh, for that sake. Uh, the Rise as well, uh, only having to threat uh, to, to be wary of that Cypad. So... Interesting enough, Sun Lazy swaps out the Cypad here, puts out his Gialis again. And Okama comes out with the water cannon, kills the two men. So at least did take out someone with him here. Because he's gonna go down to the toxic take. And Kino puts a bit of burst on Gaius. So that probably was also the th thought behind behind Thunder Lazy Swap because he doesn't wanna uh Cypad to take the better burst here because that might actually have done a lot of damage. Still does a good amount of damage to Gaius, but it's still healthy enough to do something here. It is slow though. It is slow, and it took already 15% of HP from that uh, rise, so... And now it's even slower. So, rise coming out again for Classics, putting down the Gaia speed to minus 3, and Cypher coming out again for Sunder Lazy. If we uh, look at the stats here real quick... Yeah, the only temps that are still like having some effects on it are Gaelis and Mudrid. Mudrid also lost one speed for Sun Lazy. And yeah, that Gaelis is so slow. If Classics can focus both of his attacks on Gaelis, he might actually be able to kill it. But Cypad should be faster than Kinu and might take it out beforehand. Yeah, that the Cypad swapped in here as uh, the second temp for Thunder Lazy. And Rice didn't get a demoralize onto the Cypad is actually quite huge. As the Cypad is able to kill basically anything on classic side. The Madrid, the Rice, uh, the Kino and the Volorant are so low that any attack will kill them uh, regardless from from rare or for, from which gem of Thunder's side. So um, you know the Cypad being strong against Rice and Madrid uh, makes it so that Thunder Lazy actually he wants to take the ninja juice to, just to be sure that Kino is taken down real quick. It is down, it is now dead. Rice using the ambush on Gaelis, putting it really close to death. Now, Gaelis coming in with the Hatuchi and not a crystal attack. I mean, makes sense, doesn't want to hit that on Rice, but it is too slow to actually bring out the sleep here. I mean, Sun Lazy knew that, but imagine Gaelis being on its normal speed and Rice wouldn't have done anything here. And I feel like Classic's win condition, condition is uh, stamina stalling the Cypad here. Following coming in. But how you stamina stall with all your times being so low? I mean, Baldwin should be dead by one attack from Cypad. Rice should be pretty close to dead by one attack. I feel like Rice could take two or three hits here. Uh, but obviously. Um, yeah, Thunder Lazy still has a Tem in his back pocket, uh, which is the Madrid. And the Madrid, well, I, I mean, like, who really uh, threatens the Madrid of Thunder Lazy's side? And that would be Classic's Madrid. But with a Nitro side from Cypad, uh, you can save that basically for the Madrid. <laughs> and uh, at this point, you know, when you can save that with three pr uh, priority, you outspeed the Madrid and therefore just have the only counter to your Madrid eliminated that way. I mean, I feel like... think Thunder Lazy would just let his Gaelis die here because he doesn't want to lose the tempo and maybe lose a lot of HP yeah, for sure. on his Madrid. Yeah, and he does that and he uses the Nietzsche Saito, interestingly, on Volorant. It should be that for sure here. But it also puts Cypher to 1.9% HP uh, stamina and also like, he loses his option on uh, the Mudrid. Gaelis yeah, comes out with sharp steps, does a little bit of damage to Rice, but not a huge amount, and Rice just takes out the Gaelis, and now we have the 2v2 situation. Mudrid and Rice for Classics, and Cypad and Mudrid for Sunder Lazy. Yeah, and this... I do think this worked out in Classics' way much more than it should have been, actually. Now the Cypad is low on stamina, uh, so uh, he really wants to throw a move here, but he 
kind of can't. Madrid of Classic's side is faster than Thunder Lazy's. So with a much shower on the Thunder Lazy's Madrid, it will die. As we see here with the percentages for sure. So this means that yeah, Rice might be able to rest here uh, as Cyphert for sure does, doesn't want to overexert this. Or oh, maybe it will. I couldn't imagine that as well, but we will see Mooded now uses the Machara to kill the Mooded from Sunalazy. And let's see, Cyphert actually does rest and Rice takes the rest as well. And now Classics is in a 2v1 situation here and might actually still have a good chance to win this game. Yeah, but this turn obviously resting makes it so that Cyphert now has access to Haito Uchi again and this will uh, kill Madrid from any percent as Madrid is four times weak to fighting uh, or to melee and with uh, Nietzsche side such a powerful move uh, Cyphert is for sure able to uh, yeah, knock out this Madrid. I mean, at least it gets a little bit of damage out before it now gets hit by the Nietzsche Sai. Gets taken out. And now we have the 1v1. Cypet versus Rice. Cypet though, overexerting here, so... Losing a little bit of HP in the process. And Rice now hitting with the Ambers, but is also pretty low on stamina if the numbers we see here are right. So both take an instant rest again. And let's see how both Tamers will handle this situation. No one interesting thing that Cypad can do with the Ice Shuriken here is that he can try to freeze the Rice, not only being super effective, obviously doing a lot of damage, but also being faster means that you can Ice Shuriken, Ice Shuriken, Nitro Sai, and that should for sure kill. He chose to use the Toxic Ink though, and Rice can put up another, another Amber, so the stamina uh, wasn't rightly displayed here. But Wait, Rice is did really... Cypher not overexert? I don't think. Wait, I'm not sure. No, so they both was... rested. They both rested again, so I don't think. Oh, he didn't. Okay, Mitchell Side comes out, and this should kill the Rice, and it does. So, win for Thunder Lazy here in the first game, and we are getting trolled in chat because I mispronounced Madrid. Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> I do think we also have seen a raid from Arkham Knight. Thank you for that, a little bit delayed. Uh, but yeah, we have seen a good game here from both sides. And in the end, I do feel like Classics had for sure the ability uh, in the end, uh, ending stages of the game to come through with a win here. But instead, uh, maybe, you know, uh, this uh, Thunder Lady just had a little bit better reads, a little bit better grasp on the game. And I feel like one uh, particular um, yeah, turn that came to mind is where uh, Thunder Lazy's uh, uh, Cypad, sorry, uses Nitro Sai on the Volorant. With a switch here, I feel like that uh, he might have been able to just you know, pressure the um, opposing Cypad in a way that. He can't use Nitro Side then because it is on uh, cooldown on hold and with a Noctus Bomb maybe just outright kill it. Yeah, and now Thunder Lazy is one game away from the final and as I already mentioned uh, from the Brazilian final which uh, we could see in the uh, Temporian final here then. Talking about nationalities, Podestas, what is your opinion on the first uh, German cast here on Temporium? Uh, it actually isn't. The first I know, but German we have cast. the German, like the, the trio coming in, you know? Podcast, the trio with, with Dan, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, currently I'm really enjoying it, not only obviously because I'm a, I really love co casting with you, but also because uh, Final Days and Classics have really close games that are exciting yeah. and uh, not a resident sleeper. <laughs> the tank meta is dead, guys. Now uh, we see oh, here Uchama pick up from Classics as we see the, uh, <laughs> well, let's call it a traditional start from Thunder Lazy with Pick and Giannis. As, it's a classic. Uh, it's uh, when you are here since week one or week two, you know the uh, Giannis pick a pick or Anna here pick a pick starts 
Way too good. Some real nostalgia coming in here. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, we will see how these uh, speed tiers will line up as in Classics picks another really old school start here. Crystal Spikes plus Yukama start, which uh, previously was uh, able to beat these uh, Gialis and Pigapix starts quite well. Who remembers a good Ukama start, man? Ukama Volorant, also a classic back in the days. And so the side uh, band coming in here. And yeah, a smart band here. Yeah, I mean, the it did a lot of work. Yeah, it was so well positioned against like everything that Classic said. Only the uh, uh, the Volorant was able to kind of check it with an Octus Bomb. But we have also seen that if you don't check it immediately, Cypert can just Nitrosai your Volorant and then, uh, you know, the Volorant doesn't look that great either. I mean, Tuvine is still somewhat a good answer to the, uh, the Volorant as well, but Cypert definitely was the bigger threat here in the last game. And Thunderlazy decides to ban, ban uh, the Rice from Classics, uh, which makes sense if you think about what it did to his Kaelis. Yeah, this, despite just, you know, chipping away, uh, with like, what, 22, 23, 24 percent every time an Embers hit. But, uh, you know, he was able to connect like four times with that rise, so... Huge amount. Kinu and Mudrid coming in here for Classics, and Thunderlazy picked up a Mudrid as well, so we get the double Mudrid again. Madrid, Mad I need to stop, I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... That's all right. I, I, I co-casted with people with that called this uh, this fluffy uh, term epic epic. So you know nothing can be worse. As I would expect <laughs> Thunder Lazy <laughs> uh, to pick up actually the Calabus, as Calabus is probably the only term that really wants to swap into a, a Water Cannon Crystal Spikes from Thunder Lazy's side here. Actually. Oh. Game is restarted. The game will be restarted because Analazy bugged out. Unfortunate events. But, uh. Ah, okay. They, yeah. So, uh, yeah, our, uh, our production now says that's probably because uh, or why he picked that rise. So, we will have a quick restart here. Nothing too special. I remember like watching a Temporium tournament like in the first weeks and hearing probably you saying Pig Epic. Uh, that's why that, I always that... said it wrong as well. No, no, no that was uh, that was for sure. I do think Voxel. Oh, Voxel, right? Voxel, yeah, yeah, right. You know, who who remembers uh, the OG cast? <laughs> uh, such a long time ago, but. Uh, I mean, the, the game evolved quite heavily since then, to be fair. Uh, we, we sit now we talked a little bit about these like very old school uh, picks and uh, actually uh, in the for the first two times and also a little bit about these like uh, old school strategies. But you now we see these Madrids here and they also look quite nicely equipped to deal with the opposing Thames. We've seen all these Whiplums and the anaerobic Wolverines. Quite a bit of changed. Yeah, and I mean, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Temtem is now three months in since uh, it released on Steam. It happened this week, I think. So, talking about stuff being old, even though like we're only like three months into the game being like open to public, <laughs> it seems pretty weird. But yeah, we still see, even though that that a lot of change. Um, in these three months. Yeah, I do think they try to redo the pick and bands up to the point where the bug happened. So I assume we see here a... The same start. Same start, same bands. And yeah, but up until the last uh, pick here from Thunder Lazy or his last pick phase, uh, that that seemed quite reasonable as he is debating if he wants to swap uh, uh, his ban here now for the Mashuk. Trying to protect his Madrid a little bit. He takes it out. 
Yeah, and with uh, Madrid and uh, Tuvan here, possible picks or, uh, yeah, good picks here for Thunder Daisy. That makes sense because obviously that pressured that quite well, as well as the Calibus actually. So Rice coming out now on the third pick for Thunder Lazy. Let's see how Classics wants to answer that. One thing to uh, notice here is also, also that Thunder Lazy's team, uh, uh, if you don't uh, consider the Madrid and maybe not the Volorant, uh, is only consistent of physical attackers. And we yeah, have right. seen a lot of emphasis on special attacks from these crystal spikers from yukama obviously uh, as well and the wind users wind types so uh yeah thunder lazy trying to predict uh, people putting a lot of special defense into their teams into their tvs and temps and uh, trying to attack on the physical side there maybe what also heavily. brought him into the semi-final because he's playing a little bit different here with all the attackers Interesting though, I don't remember seeing a sweat, sweatband in the first game for Classics, so it might actually be on the Valash. We will find out soon. Might be on the Valash, that would be a good choice here, I would say. So, Madrid and Calibus coming in. As the two final picks for Thunder Lazy and Classics gets the last pick, is it a Volren or is it Madrid to round out his comp? I feel like Madrid is a good choice here, as uh, as I uh, mentioned previously, Thunder Lazy has an all physical team despite the uh, pick a pick, uh, but you know that won't do that much damage probably anyways. Um, actually, fun fact: pick a pick has a higher attack stat than special attack, so uh, uh, he's an attacking just... beast. Uh, therefore, I would assume that the Madrid is a little bit better suited here as um, Volorant's passive doesn't really do anything in this uh, particular circumstance. And Classics actually seems to think the same way as you as we enter game number two here with Thunder Lazy being up one game after game one. And yeah, we have the same start for him, but a different start here for Classics, different approach. So what is Classics' way here to deal? with Thunder Lazy. So coming here from Thunder Lazy's side, he has amazing coverage here from just Valash, Crystal Spikes and Yukama Water Cannon. Wait, wait, what? Oh, Valash is... Everyone's staying in and the Water Cannon comes in quickly. The Bamboozle comes on, Gaiales who heats up now and Valash using the Madness buff, so both times are free to use their buffs. Ah, interesting. Now, I don't think that uh, Valash will be able to one-hit KO the Skialis. And uh, it's, it's probably a little bit more tanky oriented and uh, Valash, despite obviously Crystal Spikes being such a great uh, move, not being able to just outright all call people from any percent. Now, Classics has to fear a high to Uchi here from Thunder Daisy's side, and I feel like that, that could be a huge threat here towards him. Yeah, interesting to see if what the players choose here, chose, uh, choose here if they want to swap, what they want to swap. Now, most interestingly is that uh, Classics <laughs> does not really is not really prepared for this uh, circumstance, this particular. Uh, field here uh, scenario as a Kino would be able to uh, take a Haito Uchi but obviously no sharp stats or crystal bites whatsoever and it's a guessing Rice, game now. Rice is probably down to like 40-30% if he takes a Haito Uchi. So Classic actually decides to swap at Yokama give another buff to his Valish but swaps out the Valish as well for the Rice which now brings Back. The classic demoralize, slows down Gaelis, slows down Piggy Pig. Piggy Pig chooses to use the tornado on the rice, putting on 79% of health. And the crystal bite comes out on rice, which still does a good amount for just being half damage. And 
Yeah, that was uh, as well as classics could have imagined, actually. Finalizing over predicting here. Uh, maybe just thinking, well, Crucibite is a safe option, no matter what. And now classics actually not that uh, bad in a scenario here. He needs to worry about his Kino, and uh, Kino will die to any crystal attacks from Gialis. I mean, at least he got another buff on the Valish now being on three special defense and also one point of defense as well. But yeah, he wants to set up a raid boss Valash here, I feel like. I yeah. do think that this is his win conditions. Uh, Thunder Lazy is currently in charge of the game with the Gears and the Sweatband. He can uh, basically yeah, predict and, and maneuver the game how he wants. And uh, yeah, actually, uh, Classic decides to let both his temps stay on. Um, Kino giving the Revitalize to Rice. Um, Gael is still faster than Rice this time around, so he can't do anything. And Pikapik -Pik just chose to bamboozle Gaelus and put it in a safe spot again. Yeah, very uh, scary situation here for Classics. Gaelus with a sweat band, so uh, therefore. You know, it's it's kind of interesting to see that he didn't ban that. He has seen the sweat ban previously, so this Gyarus can just stay on the field forever. And he wasn't able to punish the Gyarus turn one in a way that he wanted to. So now he probably needs to try and uh, stall out the Piggy Pig here uh, some sort of way. Uh, because the summon of Gyarus can't really be stalled with the sweat band. I mean, maybe Classics didn't ban it because he was like in a false sense of security because he could deal with the Gattis pretty easily or handily in game one and it wasn't like a huge threat. But this time around it is and Not Lazy now this decides to get his pig out and puts in the Calibus. While uh, Classics just let both his temps stay in and that might have been a mistake because Kino's down but Kino has the snare so Gaelis at least loses the sweat band now. Oh, fire tornado. That could actually do a lot of damage here to Gaius and puts it to 24% of HP. So, not too bad of a turn here for Classics. And back in comes the Valash. Now, do you see the, the hyper greedy line here that I see? <laughs> With uh, <laughs> Valash using Madness well. buff. I mean, it is a possibility. I don't think he can... I mean, he won't just die to a Calibus attack, right? And Gaelus did overexert, I think? I don't think so. Okay, so, yeah, that would be hyper greedy, to be honest. Because Gaelus, if he madness buff, should have damage. But Gaelus gets swapped out here by Thunder Lazy. And Moderate comes in for it. Let's see well, what Classics does with the Valish. Um, we won't see it yet, though. Rise goes out, Karma goes in, which is a good answer to the bunny. And Velish just decides to go with a quick crystal spikes onto the Calibus. Doing a good amount, but not too much. But Calibus coming actually with a strangle on Ukama, which strangle. that's perfect for Thunder Lazy because his mother is now not touchable by the Ukama. Yeah, now it's a 1v1 Madrid versus Velash. As Classics will probably leave this Ukama in. There's no reason to not. Calibus can't Toxic Ink it because it's strangled, obviously, as well. And the Madrid looks quite well equipped to deal with the Valash, and a Rise swapping is also not really possible. And the Madrid, we have seen, um, well, will not take more than 50% from a Mud Shower, but a Dust Vortex for sure will deal a lot of damage. So we will. See now if Classic just decides to take on the one we want here with his Valash, or if he might decide to swap it out, because after all, it seems to be his winning condition in this game. Now, Valash has Madness buffed up uh, previously, so uh, I would assume this Madrid being a special attacker and does not have Stone Ball, and. This would mean that he could have actually taken a Dust Vortex, probably. So, Rice comes back out this time around, though, and tanks the Dust Vortex now, and yeah, he doesn't tank it, he dies. Too much for this cat. 
and yeah, Calibus and Ukama both not able to do anything this turn because of the strangle put out previously by Calibus. And now the Lash back on the field. And he wants to do uh, a bit of uh, damage on Thunder Lazy's Thames, but Thunder Lazy uh, needs to deal with this Yukama as well. And I feel like maybe we could see a double up into the Calibus slot. Maybe we see a double up, double up into the Madrid slot. Um, or maybe Yukama has Tsunami and can actually damage both Thames. Because Classics now is in a very interesting spot here. Uh, Madrid obviously has a lot of damage coming towards this uh, the Lash. And he probably wants to uh, yeah, not have that uh, coming for the Valash it is, as it is his win condition. But he can't one hit KO this Calabas from this percentage. Yeah, really interesting now. He definitely just wants to get off the scavenger as well to get his Valash back. And I mean, as soon as Valash like, basically starts getting the first scavenger, it gets really scary. But Thunderlazy now decides to get out of hit Calabas out of danger here. Puts out the rice, gets a little speed debuff on Ukama and Valash. And now the Quake Whirlwind comes in from Ukama. Which spot does it hit? It hits Mudrid, putting it to 2.9%. And Valish sweeps up the job, gets the Crystal Spikes down, and gets his scavenger off. So, nice turn here for Classics. Yeah, well played for sure. He did predict correctly. He said, well, this matter is probably staying in. I don't want this matter to have any impact on the game. With the Calibus coming in again here. He is back. But I don't see like uh, a good option here for this Calibus. Uh, I see the Piggy Pig actually coming in in this Calibus slot here. And the reason being for that is that a Crystal Spikes will deal, well, we have seen 46% uh, of damage flat as the Yukama then can finish the job with uh, just a water cannon uh, or maybe a blizzard. Uh, probably just enough to deal the remaining percent. Final Lazy decides to take out the rice again, as it is in a lot of danger as well. Piggy Pig comes back. The crystal dust here from Balish on the Calibus, so he wants to um, yeah, keep his stamina on a high. Barrow water cannon coming out on Piggy Pig, so Calibus is still in here and putting out a toxic in a combo, which does a lot of damage for the tanky squid but keep in mind classic still has the madrid uh, in his back pocket to deal with the rise in the very late stages of the game so i feel like he uh, is fine throwing away the yukama here maybe even trying to kill this pick a pick with a uh yeah dust vortex or uh, into water cannon or something along these lines. I mean, a little problem I see though for Classics is that is Valish is running low a little bit on stamina and definitely doesn't have sweat bend if I didn't miss anything here. So Calibus gets taken out again. Rice comes back in, so another speed debuff onto Valish and Ukama. Let's see what Ukama does here though. He brings out the Aquatic Warwind. And this time around, hits Piggy Pig again. So Piggy Pig now on 11% of HP. Crystal Dust coming out from Valish. He actually takes out the Piggy Pig, takes the Fanger Curse on Valish, just doesn't care. He gets the Scavenger back, so not too much HP lost. And Ukama is also still on the field. Hey, Ukama just having enough HP to survive that one Toxic Ink from the Calibus. No, and now the man in. comes back, the Gaelis, or the woman, should I say, because most Gaelis are probably female. Now, here's something interesting. The Rice obviously looks down this Yukama, and the Yukama is probably on suicide mission at this point. Just wants to get enough damage out. And the Vadesh maybe wants to switch, maybe just wants to attack into the Gaelis. Well, for sure wants to attack into the Gaelis. 
So do you swap it and out. you don't? Valish takes it out with the Crystal Spikes. Goodbye, Gialis. Another scavenger for Valish. Overexerts, though, so not much HP won here in this turn. Okama takes the Border Cannon choice here. Dies as well with the Overexert, giving another scavenger to Valish, who takes a little bit of damage from the Rise. A little bit, a little bit more than a little bit. But still in a healthy position. It overexerted though, so it can't do something in this turn. And Mooder and Calibus enter the field, as these are the last four attempts that are still alive in game two. Yeah, and this position favors Classics quite a bit. Madrid still 100% of HP and stamina, for ex uh, obviously. Uh, first time Madrid is brought up here on the field this game. Uh, Velash needs rest, but not sure should be able to finish off the rise, and it doesn't actually. It's not enough, and let's see what rise chooses to attack here. It is the Valish pulling it pretty low. Will Calibus follow up? Oh, he doesn't follow up with the Toxic King. He follows up with the Tsunami, which will do a lot of damage to Moodrid. No, it actually doesn't because Calibus is a tank. So Madrid still in a pretty healthy shape, but I would have expected maybe a targeting here from Calibus onto the Valish just to take it out. Yeah, me as well. And uh, now this should be Classic's game. There is yeah. a scavenger proc here on the Valash. Crystal Spikes should be able to pick up the Calibus. Wow, so a Toxic Ink might have actually been the winning way here for Thunder Lazy, but he loses and that, ladies and gentlemen, puts us into a third game. Oh, the final spot in the grand final of the Temporium Weekly number 10. Yeah, where we were played from Classics, I do feel like he was down in uh, tempo and had a little bit rough of, st rough of a start. But uh, as I said, this, he was able to you know, swap out, swap in and out, and with a couple of turns that actually pre went pretty well considering his situation, he then was able to stall out and uh, once this piggy pick left the field, this uh, Gialis of Thunderlazy's side wasn't able to, you know, just have this damage coming out without being touched. And this finally led to uh, the Gialis taking so much damage that it actually couldn't deal any amount of damage uh, in the last turns as we see it die uh, when he was swapped in, the Gialis that is. I mean, interesting takeaway from that game though. Um... Gaelus was in a pretty good spot in the early game, then lost its sweat band to uh, Kimu, though. So, I mean, now Thunderlazy at least has this information and can play around it next time. So, this might switch up the game a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, but I would also expect Classics to ban out the Gialis. Um, I don't quite know what answers he has to the Volorant. But looking at the team of uh, Thunder Lazy, it might just be an uh, aerobic Volorant because there are so few special attackers uh, that, yeah, that could be an actual good option. I mean, aerobic Volorant definitely still a viable TEM, but it was ignored by many since the anaerobic and the tank matter came in. But it sees a little bit more of play now again than it did before. And also one thing to keep in mind, Classics has access to the Rise and while it does not deal that much damage up front with the Roars, it can heavily cripple an anaerobic Volorant as, you know, with just one or two Roars, minus two stages of attack really hurt that um, in a way that it can't really do that much damage anymore. It just sits there doing nothing. Just uh, what I do at home right now with counting going on. You, you also don't uh, don't do much damage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I lost all my damage because I can't go to the gym anymore. <laughs> now uh, the Gialis here coming out, despite us talking about maybe a uh, ban here onto the Gialis from Classic side instead. Uh, Final lazy is able to pick that up again, and we will see how Classics wants to respond here. He's now in a situation where he needs to pick the next two Thames, and therefore Thunder Lazy can adapt towards that a little bit. If he even wants to, I mean, he can still just pick his pick a pick. Yeah, that 
probably what will be happen, but... <laughs> but we see another Valish start here for Classics. Maybe this time around with another partner though, as he hovers Kiyo, Rice, now Volrent, and uh, now just hovers everything, but Mashuk actually coming in. Yeah, and this... Uh... We see how this plays out, as I do think the Pika Pig would be able to move before the Mashuk. So, what is the answer here for Thunder Lazy? I don't see an option uh, or reason why not to choose Pika Pig in this slot here. It does. And now, very interesting question here Do you ban the Kinu from Thunder Lazy's side? And the reason for that, obviously, would be that, uh, well, the Kino is basically the answer towards the uh, Spetband here from Classics. Instead, the Rise gets taken out. I mean, Thunderlazy probably still having bad dreams about that one after game one. <laughs> well, uh, th that's fair, that's fair. But uh, yeah, then again, he now has this Mashuk on the other side. There with the parrier trade and perfect jab, we'll be able to, you know, lower the defense bit by bit from the Gialis. And uh, after that, then there will probably be an uppercut, and this will deal a lot of damage then. So let's see Speaking. if Classics decide to ban the Cypad again. He's thinking about this really well, taking his time. And he's close to running out, and he bans Rice as well. So Thunderlazy has the option again to get out the sidepad that actually carried this first game for him. And the first game was Noma Shook, which is basically a hard counter to that. So we see the Volorant here as well. So, um, yeah, still don't really know um, if this Willowind pick here from Classic side is correct or not. Just because, well, the only thing that re that Willowind is really good against is the uh, Madrid that is actually picked up here from Thunder Lazy. Let's see though what he picks with his fourth. I just feel like this two vine is uh, on paper really good matchup versus the Volorant and uh, in practice even so as well. Kinu coming in here and Ukama coming in as well for Classics as the last two picks of his comp and now Thunderlazy got the option if he wants to pick up his Cypad or his Calibus. I mean at this point the uh, Cypad doesn't even look that good uh, considering this Mashuk here uh, but then again Against the Ukama, against the Valash, I don't think you can pass on the side pad. Also, with the Nietzsche side, still a good option against the Volrin. And now we go into the last game of the second semi final here to, to decide who will be the final contestant. Who now, won? Uh, Pick and Man here, but it says who will go out as the winner. I feel like Thunder Lazy has the edge. Yes, uh, and it's over. <laughs> shame. Probably not to the game, as I don't think that. Uh, uh, as I say, that Thunder Lazy probably won the pick and ban. <laughs> we concede here. Yeah, he just realized no chance in that game. It's over, GG. <laughs> uh, okay, so, another bug. Yeah, we. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the draft by coming in again here, <laughs> and that means that uh, we will see the draft again, hopefully a little bit quicker than before. And yeah, I feel like Thunder Lazy is in a really good spot with the draft he had uh, in this game, and the reason for that is that uh, the hyper carry Valash that uh, uh, Classics has is contested by, by the Cypad, obviously, as well as now without the Rise on Classic's side, there's not, not much speed control going on. So uh, that is something that Thunder Lazy kind of struggled with the first two games, uh, more the first than the second one uh, for sure. But um, yeah, with that being gone on Classic's side, I feel like Thunder Lazy now freed himself up a little bit 
not only by having always speedy tamers, but also just one swap in less to that Gialis. I feel like Classics did not re respect this Gialis enough. Uh, if it just a little bit more luck, a little bit different play here from Thunder Lazy, I feel like could have easily swept Classics in the last game. Now we're waiting for the third game to start here to get it back up again. Now I feel like that uh, Classics will struggle a lot here with the Gialis uh, pick a pick start here from Thunder Lazy. Well, yeah, uh, obviously waiting here. These bugs ha obviously happen here in the early access version, and well, we already uh, we have already seen today that we also can't really uh, examine the stamina correctly when we are in spectator mode. So we we'll hopefully get a fix soon. And yeah, obviously uh, with the clubs and this update still uh, not delivered. We hope obviously that this is coming soon as well no, not soon tm well i mean the only thing that's like a little bit bothering right now with the spectate mode is the stamina bug i guess so it is as it appears that uh, we see the same picks here throughout the pick and ban phase with the Valash and the Mashuk. Trying to pressure this Gialis, but with Thunder Lazy having access to the pick a pick. Uh, it could actually uh, be quite troublesome for Classics as uh, the Valash might use Madness buff on the first turn and the Mashuk might just perfect jab or something else, but the pick a pick obviously can bamboozle that away and in the second turn, in the second turn then, with the second bamboozle, Haito Uchi is again a, a consideration here from Thunder Lazy into that slot of the Valash and this will take out the Valash in one hit after a heat up. So I think the draft will just be repeated, right? So let's... Okay. Thunder is yes, taking his time for the ban though, so maybe we see different picks again after the start. Well, if it if this is the case, that would I do think this uh, favors classics as Volorant actually gets banned on classics side. Very surprising here on my side. I feel like Volorant wasn't really able to do a lot, but uh, yeah, the side pad then got banned in response. And obviously being an answer to the Cypad with an Oxus Bomb here and with the Warrant being available last time this draft went on. The Cypad uh, came through uh, from Classic's uh, perspective. Uh, he let it come through because, well, he can just pick Volorant and be kind of fine against it. But now uh, with the Warrant gone, he just wasn't wanted to deal with the side pad then with a counter gone on his side. What that does though is leaves open the rises here for both players actually and in Classics Rise seems really good actually with a two vine pickup as well. Now we just need to decide on a Madrid versus Yukama for Classics. So the last pick coming in here for Classics. Let's see if it's mis it is Moderate or Karma. And this time around, Thunder won't be able to answer with the side pad. So unlucky for him. Uh, as I mean, the last picks before were probably not be meant serious. I feel like the Yukama could be quite decent here. 
as he already has the Mashuk and the Rise to deal super effective damage against, well, the, the Gealis and the Chuvine. And Yukama heavily pressures the Rise, can do decent damage against the uh, Gealis. And I feel like was in the last game, despite obviously going down from that Toxic Ink, quite a good asset here for Classics. As he uh, doesn't agree with me, picks up the Madrid after heavy thinking. And lose used up a lot of his reverse time and uh, reserve time there. And Thunder answers with the Madrid as well. And I hope now everything finally works out and we are gonna see the last game of this three game series. The deciding game of the semi-final between Thunder Lazy and Classics. Yeah, right off the bat, Classics <laughs> in a bad spot here. He will be able to madness buff with his, with his Valesh, but it's, that is the only thing that will be going on for the next five turns for him, I feel like. And we will see how this Mashuk is doing against Gialis and Pick a Pick. Uh, it has access to cage, but at that point I feel like Thunder Lazy doesn't want to swap at all in the first, like, what, five, five, six turns, so... Uh, uh, one thing though, with Bamboozle now working as a status, can it still stop a Madness buff from Badish? Uh, no. Can't. Okay. You wanna, you wanna Bamboozle the Blash too? Yeah, it was, it was always a nice little sneaky way of stopping a madness buff i mean yeah that's right but you know uh, in the case that Vilesh then attacks folks suddenly uh, you kind of lost the game because not only did you not bamboozle your dialis but also the Vilesh is then bamboozled and can't be high to uchi the next turn so we see the swap kino coming in here for the mashu um guy is using its heat up being bamboozled by pick a pick and Valish using the Madness buff, so pretty much the same thing that happened uh, as it happened in the f second game. And now we will see if Gaelis wants to go ham, will go ham here. I mean, he probably doesn't want to attack the Kino with the Snare. Yeah, probably not. And I would expect a Rise swap in here again. I've seen that the Rise actually could, could take the Saito Uchis quite well. Uh, surprisingly well, actually, so... He retreats, though, and... Masha coming back on the battlefield. <laughs> Trying to mitigate as much damage as possible. Kino also leaving, and Rice coming in. Demolize putting Gaelos and Pick a Pick down one speed, but... Pick a Pick just evens it out again with a Turbo Choreography, and the high to Uchi of Gaelos coming onto the Mashuk doing basically nothing at all except for putting it to sleep which I mean is now help from shoot because now he's awake and can't be put into a sleep state again this turn and yeah Thunder Lazy has a very obvious play to make here which would be a bamboozle Gialis and do something for example heat up as Gialis is still 100% of HP could set up for a double heat up and basically the only thing that stops Gialis then is this Mashuk. So Gialis retreats from the battlefield and Thunder Lazy puts out his own rice. Now doing his own demoralize. Pig Pig staying on the field, bamboozling rice. He may say he gets that. dodged by that and the Amber is coming out on rice which doesn't put him into a burn status. So just losing 7%. Not even 7%, but close to 7% of HP here. Miss Mashuk with a humiliating slap over the perfect jab. Interesting choice here, as uh, obviously it, it's a little bit more damage up front, but uh, with, you know, these crystal attempts here and there still, uh, this perfect jab. Just does the same thing as uh, as the humiliating step, but has lower stamina cost as the step bonus. So well, that could be something to uh, watch out for. 
Yeah, there's definitely sometimes you definitely don't want to get hit by that, and Gaelus would be one of them. I mean, Rice taking it here wouldn't have been too bad, but it was been wounded, so no worries for Thunder Lazy. Yeah, and classics. Oh, Rice leaves the field. Moderate coming in for classics. Tornado coming out on the Mashuk. That might actually do a good amount. Really good amount, putting it on 17 HP here. Pick a pick over exerts for that one as well, though, and gets hit by the uppercut. Let's see what Rice decides to do here. It goes with the MS, but Mashuk will survive with a sliver of health. Just enough here. And suddenly, Madrid looks kind of fine actually in this spot here. And uh, Classics can decide to leave this Mashuk in, deal a bit more damage, sob it out. Uh, to, you know, tank a hit at a later stage, maybe. Yeah, this is a interesting spot. Especially because Pig a Pig won't uh, be able to do anything. This turn, this, at least. Uh, this Madrid looks really good, actually, here. Obviously, the Gialis can uh, one-hit go hit with Haito Uchi. But uh, other than that, there's a Rise, there's a Two Vine, there's a Madrid. Every of these Thames um, receives double damage and will take quite a beating from a much shower or a dust vortex from this Madrid on the classic side. It's just a matter if uh, Thunder Lazy is able to keep up the speed. Oh. Of Mashuk decides to cage it to keep everyone in. The dust vortex coming out on a rise, putting it really low. But the fire tornado from rise, let's see where it hits. It hits Madrid. Also, does 38% of damage. Pig a pig is resting. So, Thunder Lazy didn't even decide to swap anything out, which uh, is a reason why he didn't get hold down by the cage, but still. They now have to fight it out. <laughs> Wait, Madrid actually uh, able to swap out here because of the resistant trade, obviously. Actually, was thinking if he had Grease, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> it would not make sense as the resistant trade does take care of that, anyways. But now this rise is, uh, yeah, kind of locked in here with the Madrid and the Mushuk. So I would expect uh, just a much shower here onto the rise again, killing it. And this opens up uh, Kazakh's team here a little bit. He wants to get a demoralize onto the Gialis, I think. And once that is done, uh, the Madrid will be able to uh, uh, at least kind of pressure this Gialis. But the Gialis is at 100% of HP, and this is troublesome actually for Classics. He needs a kind of a setup here in order to beat it. Obviously, of a lash. And uh, that is all field of them. Decides to stay. It was the only time that actually had the option to swap out, as we said already, and takes out the rice. Pick a pick now, coming in with the hypnosis on Mashu. Which Don't know what is interesting. What that is about. Uh, as the Madrid takes the kill, obviously, here. Yeah, that's a play I really can't follow. I would have preferred an. Well, on the other side, a Hypnosis would only put Moodred... I mean, he, it would be awake again, so it wouldn't have done much. Yeah, but the Piggy Pig uh, could use Tornado or something else to kill the Mashuk. Because now the Mashuk is still on the field. Uh, obviously, it can't do much the next turn, but uh, that still requires uh, his opponent, Thunder Lazy, to yeah dedicate it... Uh, a attack to it, dedicate something uh, to kill it. That ju might just be good enough here for classics. Gialis now and as I said, this Gialis currently pretty scary as um, yeah, the Madrid can't really go up uh, against it. So I would expect the rise to come in here for uh, some time of classics, just for the demoralized buff. And then I would also uh, probably anticipate a turbo choreography of the Hungry Pig, trying to even it out again. 
seems like a pretty sensible idea here. I'm not. I guess should have half high Uji right now, if I'm not mistaken. So, do you think he will let uh, let Mashuk stay in? Uh, possibly. Um, I just looked at a uh, possibility to bring the Vlash with the Kino at the same time and uh, how this currently is uh, on the on the field. It's not possible for Classics uh, to have, a, have that in a safe way as the Mashuk will move uh, move out second and therefore this uh, yeah this would be the wrong order basically for the Thames. So Rice comes out, puts out the demoralized. Does Vortex coming onto Gaelis? Doing a pretty good amount of damage, but Madrid also has to have excel for that. But Boozle on Gaelis now, so he is at least safe in the next turn from one attack and the crystal bite on Rice, oh that hurts. That was a good turn here from Classics. And as I said, this Madrid um, wants to find a spot where he can just safely dust Vortex, the Gialis, and he found the spot. Uh, actually moving first as well, so this Madrid probably is quite speedy. And, and obviously with the speed down for the Gialis, that is kind of free to throw out the Madrid and bring it in, in a, at a later stage. Pick a pick over exerted, so notably there's no turbo choreography coming this turn to even out the speeds again. I feel like uh, Thanalazy's best option is here to. Uh, Maybe high to Uchi the rise, or uh, yeah, as I said, maybe heat up again. Actually, you have a turn where you don't do much damage, and uh, you probably don't want to attack the Madrid with a crystal move, uh, predicting some sort of Kino switch. So having just plus for attack might just swing it in your in your favor because instead of doing 25% to the rise, crystal might even resist it with D50. So Madrid gets taken out again. This time Mashu coming in. With the slip of health it still has left. So Lazy decides to get out his pick a pick and put his Madrid out. And Gailas now goes with the Haiduchi, which is still able to kill Mashu. Yeah, that's that's free HP. And I thought it said Mashu's alert. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. And Rai's coming out with the Embers, but Mudrid got an Ice Cube on it, so... And, ah, got resistance on it, sorry. Mudrid got the Ice Cube on it, and it doesn't take much damage from this attack as well. And, and there he is. Madrid back again here for Classics. And obviously because now Gialis used Haito Uchi, there's no good attack from the Gialis into the Madrid. The Madrids uh, obviously be able to uh, kill themselves quite effectively with much showers or on Thanalese's side even a uh, dust vortex. Dust yes, vortex actually could here. kill. It should kill, I think it did all the damage on Gaelis, uh, which he had to eat in this game. Wait, which Madrid are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> Classics. Yeah, no, no, uh, Classic Madrid doesn't have uh, Dust Vortex here, I think. Ah, right, 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 it didn't have the whole turn here, yeah. Safe switch here, either way from Thunder Lazy. KP comes out. Mm. Machow does do a lot of damage, but now the Dust Vortex comes out and it is enough to kill the Madrid. The Madrid. <laughs> he just stop. Uh, and Rice. <laughs> Coming here with the fire tornado on a pick a pick, does it actually is enough to take it out? No, it puts it on five percent of HP. So Thunder Lazy now with the small advantage, still got four times left while Classics on his three left. Well, Classics has the better range of temps actually. I feel like uh, with Madrid being below fifty percent, this pick a pick uh, on the verge of dying. The Valish. Uh, you know, the Skialis is at 37% uh, as well, so only two vine being healthy here for Thunder Lazy. And this is a perfect situation for a Valash. 
uh, uh, despite obviously there is a Madrid. But yeah. we have seen the uh, Dust Vortex on the previous turn, therefore the Mud Shower, uh, the only option here for Madrid. And what that means is obviously it's not that strong and Valash with a, um, a Madness buff that was used in the very first turn of the game will be able to take that quite well. I mean, the village is definitely able to sweep through here. I mean, we could also see a uh, another madness buff here. Because uh, I'm not sure if the rise... Oh no, the rise is not faster than a piggy pig. As I uh, neglected a demoralize on Classic's rise. So, yeah, the piggy pig might be able to bamboozle here still and that... Could be uh, good for Thunder Lazy. Yeah, it's two vine. Swap comes here in with the two vine, and the crystal spikes instantly hit on the two vine, putting it really low. Hypnosis coming out on Valash. And what does Rice do in his turn? It actually uses Ambers on Pikachu to take it out for good. Takes the faint curse, gives the scavenger to the Valash, but it is unaffected by Hypnosis because of the energy drink. Yeah. We have seen a couple of energy drinks now on the lashes, and this is the reason why we have speedy picks and speedy grandpas that try to. Well, <laughs> didn't think that I would say that one, uh, speedy grandpa. Speedy grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that also can that that can help noses, uh, and therefore stall out the Valash, especially when there is uh, rises uh, that you demoralize your Valash and just have this protection from the from the hypnosis, from the sleep, making the Valash be able to move. Well, we have seen that is quite useful, actually. Angel Dream is also always so dirty because you can't know if you didn't test it before and then it comes out and you just basically lose an attack and a turn. And this one, basically, the energy drink basically decided that game now. So from my point of perspective, this is decided for classics. Yeah, he's... Uh... Classics, that is, is such a good position here. You can take out the two vine. Uh, Thunder Lazy can't really put in something else in the slot, as the something else would be the Gyalis that will also die to a crystal spikes. And Classics doesn't really care about his uh, rise too much. Uh, for example, a raw could be a possibility here for Classics side. Uh, King's raw to drop the speed of Madrid. And Madrid doesn't have Dusk Vortex yet. It was swapped out last turn, therefore they don't get the hold. And yeah, Valesh had now basically full speed, uh, full HP. As, uh, it's getting quite late here. Uh, and I don't really uh, know what speed and HP is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so Rice gets taken out, Kino getting another buff on it, Valesh. So. Unstoppable machine going strong now, putting out the crystal dust on a two win actually, which naturally kills it. Putting Valash now at 100%. Mudrid, Mudrid using the mud shower here, but as we can see, not a lot of damage coming out. And Thunder Lazy now down to his two last attempts, and yeah, both should be a safe kill with the crystal spikes. Yeah. Well, not the Mudrid, I mean, it resists uh, crystal, but. For sure, this uh, gear should go down. Here comes the rise again. So the finish from Valash on the Gyalis here. Getting himself another scavenger off. Didn't even always dirt, so. Can probably. Maybe. Nah, I think it was exactly 0%, but yeah. So as he now realizes it is over. He can't do anything with his bunny here, and Classics decides the best of three for himself and goes to the final to fight Markin LP here at the Temporium Weekly number 10. Yeah, Thunder Lazy had the Gyalis that was quite strong actually, but wasn't able to do much. And uh, a few bad reads with like Crystal Spikes, for example, hitting the Rise, and then the Haito Uchi hitting the almost dead uh, Mashuk, and that was swapped in really uh, solidified uh, the win here and uh, put Classic in such a good position, not only obviously being able to 
uh, you know, have good traits in that particular turn, but also then stalling out the Gialis and uh, therefore being able to pressure it in the mid game, set him up for a really easy end game. We've seen that he was breathing through that uh, last couple of attempts here with the setup of the Valesh. And uh, still, there would be uh, a few more protector buffs coming the Valesh's way as the Keen was alive as well. So very well played by Thunderlazy, but in the end he got bested by Klasix. And congratulations, Klasix, to making it uh, to the finals. So that will bring up Mark and LP versus Classix in the next game. Um, I think we're gonna hit a quick pause here though, and uh, for me it's a goodbye time. Because I'm gonna leave now. Uh, yeah, you will hear Potestas and Kennedy uh, doing the final for you. Because uh, Dan said, you can't even say Madrid, you're fired. No, just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, actually true that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. So, um, yeah. A uh, big thanks uh, for having me today. Uh, also, a big thanks to Potestas and Kennedy uh, for the nice casts of the two games. And uh, yeah, have much fun casting the final. And I'm going to head out. Have a good one.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Temporium Weekly, number 10. I'm Prez B. Kennedy, joined by Fabi. Fabi, say hello to the people. Uh, hello to the people. <laughs> <laughs> we are here with the finals for our weekly tournament, and it is going to be Mark and LP versus Quaslix. We've had a hot set of games all day long, and I'm, I'm very hyped to get into like this final matchup. I will admit, I was like eating um, during that last match, so I didn't get to see like every single play going on. But uh, just jumping into this, like, I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, uh, let me give you the very quick rundown here. Um, it was Thunder Lazy versus Classics. Thunder Lazy had a Gialis and no Kinu, whereas Classics had uh, no Pick a Pick and uh, was stripped of his Gialis, so it was always Gialis versus uh, no Gialis. Classics came out uh, victorious in the end, and uh, not only because obviously uh, he played very well, um, but uh, also that he could just deal a lot of uh, have a lot of pressure, and that was uh, all done without any hypnosis from Classics' side. So uh, I was I was loosely paying attention to the chat, and I was seeing there was a lot of things going on in like the pick and ban phase. And I think that's one thing I really respect about Mark and LP going through the first set was just how much attention to detail he was paying in the in the pick and ban phase and responding to his opponent's strategy. So um, just like you mentioning those Gaelis swaps and then going into like this next game, um, that's going to be kind of like a pressure point I look for is just like, is the game you know, set for the first couple of turns from the pick and ban phase, or are these two players going to be able to play around each other? Well, in the last, uh, in the second semifinals, we had very similar bands, and um, yeah, the, the team compositions changed a little bit, but it wasn't like uh, super crazy. Um, so the core team, uh, the three teams were, four teams were always the same. Uh, so. Yeah, we have seen Mark and LP really adapting a little bit, and we will see if uh, that uh, brings him uh, on top of Classics, or if Classics just knows um, from the very beginning of the match what his best uh, pick and bends are, uh, regardless. Yeah, and if you are just joining us, we are about to jump into the first game of our finals. We're just waiting for it to uh, come underway. And uh, that's again going to be Markin LP versus Quaslix. I've uh, got both of these players on my friends list, and I'm just like constantly like clicking and seeing like, oh, can we get into it? Can we get into it? Can we get into it? Why are they making me wait like this? So, um, Bobby, can you tell me what's going on with this Mudrid meta? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not aware of this. Oh new no, team. it's a Mudrid meta. Uh, <laughs> Well, um, from the uh, in-game side of you, I don't think I can uh, tell you anything new. You should know that by now. But from <laughs> the uh, pronunciation standpoint, obviously, uh, there was a fellow guy that uh, kind of likes cows uh, because he's a big <laughs> fan of steak. So, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm joking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, this, this Madrid... Uh, for Classics came in quite uh, strong, as as I said, uh, Thunder Lazy had this uh, Gialis and it was free to pick for him every time. So uh, Classics used the uh, Madrid to yeah, deal a lot of pressure towards a lot of the team that um, Thunder Lazy had to bring, uh, quote unquote, had to bring and uh, or chose to bring, as the Earth typing was good against not only the uh, Gialis, obviously, but also against Tuvine and uh, Rice as well. So, uh, especially in the last game, we could see a situation where Classics had a Madrid that was not really contested, and anything that Thunder Lazy would be able to do is um, just swap in or let something die to a uh, Macho or the Swartex. Yeah, so. and I love I love the trifecta buff that Madrid kind of got, which has let it find its place inside of competitive Temtem. 
of when the spring patch hit, it got um, boosted stats from the uh, balance adjustment. Then that very same week was also the uh, was the free or not the side part week for it, where it got access to its egg move dust vortex for additional special damage. And then Receptive kind of got a big buff with Bamboozle and uh, Alert uh, being moved to statuses. And uh, I think all of those things coming together, it's just very nice to see like every 10 able to kind of find their spot and for Mudred to kind of have situations where it's in a great pick to bring as opposed to some other things you can have on your team. I do think Classics runs uh, Resistant as well as Thunder Lazy as well. So, uh, you know, the receptive not coming through, but obviously resistant as we've seen it on Yalis day in, day out, quite strong. And uh, that's also a feature for Madrid that makes it quite strong uh, against, for example, Hypnosis. All right. And again, we are still waiting for that final game to come underway. I'm just making sure I'm not bugged out right now. Yeah, and I w want to uh, comment on a trend uh, that we have seen now in this uh, second semi-final here a little bit, as well as some other teams. Uh, and that trend is to um, pivot away from the double support uh, that a lot of these uh, tamers brought in the well, first three months, basically, of the game. And the past couple of weeks, we have seen a, a drop. Uh, somebody dropped uh, a pick here and there, or uh, Thunder Laser here having a good success with dropping actually Kinu. Um, and yeah, I feel like with a time, uh, yeah, this this really uh, shakes up the matter a little bit because um, Classics suddenly doesn't need to fear this super tanky Kinu buffed Gialis anymore and, uh, and therefore doesn't need to ban it. Um, from his perspective. On the other hand, from Thunder Lazy's perspective is, since he has no Kino and nobody is like, yeah, okay, then Skialis isn't that threatening anymore, then, uh, you know, I can let it through. Thunder Lazy is then free to pick the Gialis and also uh, every game, actually. So uh, this opens up quite a bit of uh, strategies in the pick and bans here for these players. Yeah, so and I'm for a hot second, we saw Gaialis Ukama being such like the power pick, but I love how the Gaialis Kinu is adopted. And um, for myself, Bobby, I'm able to get into the game now and start spectating. So I'm going to start running everybody through what's happening in pick and bands. So getting into game one of this final, Mark and LP versus Quaslix. It is the first ban going to Quaslix as Quaslix is considering now banning uh, that Kinu. Like you were uh, talking about, it can be a power start with the Gyalis, but uh, opting to go for the Volarin. Uh, first ban for Quaslix is on the Volarin, and Markin LP has banned out the Gyalis. And Markin has picked up Kinu for himself as his first pick. And we see uh, uh, for the couple of bans, for the first ban, usually a very uh, specific strategies uh, from these players. So Quaslix was banning Volarin day in and day out here, and that is because he has a lot of special attackers. His uh, Vlash, his Yukama, his Madrid, uh, um, all get kind of walled and, and don't do that well against a fully ramped up Volorant. So he wants to bend that over the Gialis. Says, I can deal with the Gialis. I have a Madrid, I have different, uh, I, have a, I have a Mashuk, I can, uh, um, yeah, have, have different means in order to combat a Gialis start here. Yeah, Mashuk can be such a dangerous threat to these Gyalises, especially when it's running Parrier. Quaslix is going to pick up Kinu as Quaslix debates the second Tim to bring starting this off. And a Kinu Gyalis is on the table for Markham, so Quaslix just has to be very conscious of that with this next pick. Uh, thinking about bringing something to bring pressure and uh, deciding to bring the Valash. So I would expect to mark in here with the Gialis because it probably won't go through the sec uh, second ban phase here. And uh, well, this Tadaru could be 
equipped to uh, deal with the village. But I feel like uh, for a more uh, broader perspective, like, yeah, this first pick and then uh, having the first turn be a uh, madness buff and heat up turn uh, should still be pretty good for Marken. Yeah, Marken deciding to go with that Kinu Gialis and uh, facing off against a Kinu Valash. Which one of these Crystal Sweepers this game is going to be able to dish out the most damage? Marken with a ban onto Quaslix Mushuk as uh, Quaslix is debating the second ban now, hovering the Teteru. Yeah, and Tadori obviously very good here uh, for Marken with Stoneball. And this can pressure the Valash. That can pressure the Madrid as well. And uh, I do think it has uh, access to Noxious Bomb as well, so Yukama doesn't seem to be that safe. You have Quaslix banning out the Pigapack instead, marking LP, picking up Grandpa and Whiplump, and Quaslix picking up Volarin, Rise, and about to pick his third and final 10 to wrap up their team. And I feel like uh, the Sukama might not be that equipped for this job here. <laughs> she still picks it. And, and Ukama and Saipat are going to be the final two picks for these Tims. Or for these Tamers. The final two Tims for these Tamers. We are getting into game one of our finals. Markin LP versus Quaslix. Bobby, what are we looking for in this turn one here? So I feel like turn one is just set up from both sides. I can't imagine anything going on here just yet. And I do feel like uh, both players want to swap out the Kinu. As, uh, yeah, there are wind conditions in Village and Gyalis, uh yeah, favor a lot from just repeated protector buffs. And here's what's interesting then. What do you swap in here for these Tamers? Um, well, we will see as Markin swaps out his Kinu and the Saipat comes in to take its place. Kinu swapping out for Quaslex and Rise coming in to take its place. That Demoralize is going to put the Gyalis on a leg down for the rest of this match. Markin with a heat up on its Gyalis and Madness buff onto Quaslex Valash as these Crystal Sweepers are just getting started. I do believe the speed down for the Cypad can be quite uh, detrimental here as well as now Nitro Sai will not go before anything that the Valash throws out. And uh, I feel like though that uh, Markin play still has a good shot here, the Cypad might not be able to uh, apply the, the amount of pressure that he wants uh, with this um, yeah, decrease in speed right now, but I feel like this uh, Gyalis is still looking quite strong, and a Heritochu into the Valash slot will kill outright from this percentage. And uh, so we have both players here needing to free a little bit of attacks from uh, from the other side. Now the question, who can fake out the opponent the best? Yeah, who is going to blink first here as this uh, threatening side for Mark and LP stares down Quaslix field, but uh, without that speed play, Quaslix is, or without that speed advantage, Quaslix kind of has a hand up in the game here and just determining how this turn is going to play out. Where the Embers lands, if it outspeeds anything, can uh, determine a huge amount of damage. Um, on Quaslik's side, if the Vlash is able to double up into something with Crystal Spikes going off at the top of the round, getting a Scavenger off, it's a really, really scary spot to be. But then on the same boat, you don't want to lose your Vlash if uh, things don't go in your favor. Yeah, I feel like um, especially a safe play from Markin, quote-unquote safe play with, for example, Crystal Bite into the Vlash spot and Haito Uchi, uh, sorry, Nicho Sai from the Cypad and uh, the crystal attack from the Gyalis uh, would you know, cover all bases. If the Kino comes in, the Kino will die to a crystal attack from the Gyalis. And if the rest stays in, the Nietzsche Sai will finish the job. 
the Blash first. swapping out for Quaslix as Quaslix blinks first on this Ukama coming in to take its spot. Mark and LP with the Crystal Bite onto that slot. It deals so much damage. The Embers is going to go out onto Gaialis, but the Gaialis has Ice Cube and it has Resistance. And it says it doesn't care about the fire as the Reed comes in from Markin with the Toxic Ink from Saipat onto the Ukama and the Ukama's out. And it's turn, it's turn two, a Tim is dead. Turn three, we are just starting this game. And uh, Quaslix has some room to, or has some space to start climbing. Yeah, Mark in here with that uh, particular set of attacks, making sure to cover all bases, basically. As I said, there's a quote-unquote safe uh, attack into that. All right, and Mark and LP is not slowing down as he sharp stabs into the Volaren slot with his guy Alice. Volaren with a noxious bomb into Saipat, dealing a good chunk of its HP, but the Saipat still has Nitro Sai online, and that's going to hit into that Volaren's physical defense. It doesn't have any Kinu buffs, and it deals a bunch of damage to that Volaren as the Volaren's at 20%. A roar from the Rise is going to come a little bit too late as the damage has already been done. And we have seen that the Sharp is moving first here. Uh, but not sure about the speed here of the Volorant exactly. And obviously also not of the speed here of the Gialis. Um, it might be that the Volorant actually could move first here and that would mean that Cypad is in a little bit of danger. Mark and LP swapping out his Gialis. The Whiplum coming in to take its spot. Rise being swapped out for Quaslix. Is that a read on that Whiplum swap in? As Quaslix swaps in the lash for himself a double swap for markin as also saipat swaps out and grandpa coming in to take its place volaren with the noxious bomb onto the grandpa slot is going to deal a nice little chunk of damage to grandpa so it can uh, potentially only <laughs> take one more of those and the third one will kill it yeah good swap here from classics and suddenly Classic doesn't seem to be in such a bad spot here. Um, we'll be probably be able to um, deal a lot of damage to both of these temps here from Mark and LP. And the Wolverine, despite looking kind of damaged, if uh, Mark and LP will kill it outright, we'll just give a little bit of HP back to the Valash. And this is a scary situation to be. Kinu comes in for Quaslix, starting to buff up that Valash, and we've already seen how the Scavenger can bring it back in the game. Turbo Choreography from the Grandpa. Synergy giving the two stages of the speed, but the Valash with the Crystal Spikes onto the Grandpa is going to kill it, uh, dealing all 66% of its HP. The no Synergy Tsunami from the Whip Flump coming out and hitting both Tims, but there's no freeze pressure because it did not outspeed the Valash's Crystal Spikes. And it's four Tims to four Tims. Yeah, suddenly uh, uh, Classics brought it back. Oh, one turn, one swap, and he's back in the game. Back in it indeed. This Quas or this uh, Valash has. I'm going to read the stats out for everybody watching. Plus two defense, plus two special attack, and plus four special defense. It is uh, not going to be threatened at all by this Wimplump unless the Wimplump can just target it down with uh, two turns of like Cold Breeze to try and freeze it out. Yeah, but Markin LP kind of lost his uh, footing here and that is because his uh, Tsunami wasn't able to do the Synergy and the Cold uh, Appliance to, to go with it. Now suddenly this Valash has another uh, attack here coming. And Quaslix dealing, doing such a good job playing around the uh, speed control uh, with this Valash. Rise comes in and demoralizes, lowering the enemy's team speed. Valash with another Crystal Spikes onto uh, Gaialis. Gaialis with Haido Uchi onto Valash, dealing a nice little chunk of damage, but the Valash has a energy drink and isn't going to be put to sleep. And uh, the Whiplum started off the turn with a sharp rain onto the Valash, but it didn't deal much of any damage with the plus four special D. Yeah, the plus four special defense coming in huge here. And yeah, the Gialis uh, at uh, plus one attack only because of the 
Rise used King's raw, sorry, raw, uh, the regular raw, not dropping speed um, on the previous turn. Now the gas isn't that scary anymore. And uh, the Vlash ramped up. Whiplump with the tornado continuing to attack into this Vlash's uh, special uh, defense, but the Vlash with the crystal dust is going to attack the Gyalis. It is not going to be enough to kill the Gyalis as the Gyalis gets a sharp stab off and raid boss Vlash is dead. No more scavenger uh, buffs for it as a uh, fire tornado comes out from Ray's and raid buff Gyalis, a raid boss Gyalis is also dead. It's a battle of whatever is left for these two tamers. And what is this? Turn six? As uh, Mark is Markin throws out Kinu and Quaslix throws out Volarin. I'm sorry. Yep. Turn eight, and it, uh, tur that was turn seven, and we had so much action already. Three Tims versus three Tims. Yeah, kind of interesting that both of these players have a shell of a more. Uh, I buff my my team up. I I will uh, yeah mitigate a lot of damage. Shell, but then just throw out all these uh, attacking moves, killing left and right. Yeah, Kinu coming out for Quaslix and uh, Volaren coming out for uh, Quaslix too. The or rather Volaren was already out. <laughs> uh, Cold Breeze on the Volaren. Noxious Bomb from Volaren onto Whiplump. Does a good chunk of damage. That Volaren is just barely hanging in there. Uh, but I think what that last turn proved is both the Kinu and the Whiplump outspeed the Volaren. Exactly, that Volaren should be going down, at least this turn. And I hope that the Kinu of Krasix uh, can't revitalize the Volaren, otherwise Markin LP is in a really tough spot. Obviously, from Markin, uh, Markin's side here, as Krasix obviously really wants to re uh, uh, revitalize and yeah, get this Volaren back up uh, in HP as it can tank so much. Rise coming out for Quaslix. Hypnosis from the Kinu onto the Rise. The Rise is going to be sleep for the next turn. And the freeze pressure from the whip lump with a cold breeze onto the whip lump puts a little bit of, of coldness on there. And Quaslix Kinu with the beta burst on the whip lump. It's not a huge amount of damage. Now that was really. Uh, nothing to worry about from Akin LP's side. Uh, Classics staring down these, uh, this Kino and this Whiplump here. And both of these Thames, yeah, have have the CC pressure. So the Kino probably won't be able to, to do anything next turn. And uh, that leaves the Kino of Makin LP to, yeah, do something like a uh, Turbo Choreography, for example, bringing up its speed. Uh, bringing up the speed of the Whiplump again. Yeah, the sky is the limit for this Kinu right now, as Mark and LP kind of forces a free turn here with the sleep and the freeze pressure. Volaren swapping in for Quaslix and another cold breeze from this Whiplump as it continues to put out its uh, freeze pressure. And uh, Kinu with the Revitalize onto the Whip Lump is going to just keep this Whip Lump in the game. Um, cold winds keep blowing. Yeah, and that was actually quite huge here for Marking LP that this Cold Breeze was faster than the Kinu. And uh, therefore mitigating a Revitalize here again. Quadslix nice. is getting as many Demoralizes off as he can this match. As uh, a sharp rain is coming out from the <laughs> whip lump onto the rise's slot. Not going to deal a huge amount of damage to that rise, but it is going down surely but steadily. Such a tanky support, Tim, as both the Kinu and the whip lump attack into it. Yeah, but uh, I'm wondering if Marking P has Turbo Choreography on his Kinu or if he doesn't, because, well, it seems like such a good move in that uh, situation. Now, uh, Kino is at minus one, two speed, actually. The Whiplum is at minus one speed. And that means that the Kino now can revitalize before anything else. And it also means that the Roland might be swapped in, uh, being revitalized. And then uh, Mark and the P, yeah, has to 
try and deal with that as well. Notice also that the Cypad has minus one attack of marking LP. And uh, this comes into play against this Wolverine, as Wolverine has plus four special defense. Kwaslik's opting to go with the Beta Burst onto the enemy Kinu and rise with the Fire Tornado onto the Kinu. Uh, rather than healing anything, they are aiming to take it out, but the Kinu is so specially defensive, it's going to be able to survive that. Uh, Marking LP's Kinu responds with the Beta Burst of its own, taking out the Rise and the Whiplump. Oh, it overexerted a huge amount to do that. The Whiplump is going to rest for the turn, getting his stamina back. And I do think that uh, the Whiplump has now Tornado available that, despite it being at minus one speed, should be able to move first here. The Whiplump with out. the Tornado onto the Volaren, just like you said, and that is going to outspeed the... That's going to outspeed the Kinu, kill the Volaren, and overinsert the Whiplump. The Kinu goes for the Revitalize, but there's no Volaren to Revitalize, as Kinu is now steering down three Thames uh, to try and finish this match off. <laughs> Finally, there's a Turbo Choreography from Mark <laughs> and Mark and LP decides he's going first next round with the Turbo Choreography, and who cares if this Kinu overexerts itself even further? A Beta Burst from Quaslet's Kinu is going to take out uh, Mark and LP's Kinu, as it's down to two Tims versus one. But no. Saipat, the eternal Kinu <laughs> enemy. Cold Breeze from Whiplump on the Kinu that puts a little bit of freeze pressure. Another Psy beta Pat burst. Might die. Yeah, this Kinu is beta bursting so out of its mind. Uh, but the Saipat lives at 7% HP and gets the toxic tick off. And that's going to signal the end of this Kinu as the final Cold Breeze is going to give game one to Markin LP. Congratulations to that uh, first win here in the set, uh, to Markin. Yeah, that uh, was quite close actually in the end here, as if the King Wu of uh, Classics would be able to kill this uh, Saipet. Suddenly it would drag out quite a bit and I do think in the end, with the uh, constant freezing of that Whiplump, uh, Markin would have succeeded and uh, won anyways, but uh, it would have been way closer than this. Uh, obviously, the Toxic Ink into the Kino finishing j the drop quite easily. All right, these Tamers are jumping back into it. Uh, we are ready for our game two of Markin LP versus Quaslitz. Mark and LP is up one game, and the first ban of the game was on Quaslix's Gyalis, as Quaslix responded in turn by banning Mark and LP's Volaren. Uh, Mark and L or Quaslix picking up the lash for his first time, and Mark and LP is now deciding what he's going to bring to this uh, match. And I feel uh, like uh, go with Inu and Gyalis. Exactly, I do feel like Markin wasn't pressured at all here uh, in the first round so why not pick the same opening uh, that he picked last time and I feel like that uh, despite uh, classics here with the moderate uh, still should favor Mark in a little bit because in the end he still can just swap out here um, swap out the Gialis, swap out the uh, Kinu Maybe to have a little bit more favorable uh, matchup and um, you know a lot of value just lies in the protector buff on the Gyalis once or twice to really make sure this Gyalis can survive just these one two rounds more that uh, the Gyalis can uh, then use to yeah, dish out a lot of damage. And we're going to see the same team for each tamer picked up except instead of Ukama we have Madrid on Quaslik's side. And uh, Markin is running all of the Tims that he brought to the game last game. One thing here, Fabi, that I think Markin did really well last game is recognizing when to trade his Gyalis. Of, uh, you traded his Gyalis for 
the for the Velash, which I felt won him that game. But this turn one, we're going to see the Kinu swapped out for Saipat and a heat up on the Gyalis. The Madrid with the Mud Shower onto the Gyalis, dealing 30% of its HP. The Velash going for a Madness buff as it is online for the rest of this game, ready to deal out some damage. We are in it. And uh, just like that, Classics uh, loses a lot of tempo here as Markin with a good swap in the side page stays in with the Gyalis. Maybe Classics, uh, you know, throwing a little bit of a mud shower, uh, but expecting finally that Markin would swap out the Gyalis as well. Now, seeing both of these melee types in, uh, from Classics side here, is quite scary as the Madrid is four times weak to that and will die from anything that is thrown uh, at him melee wise. And Vlash obviously doesn't appreciate any physical melee attacks from Saipet or the Gialis. All right, and I am uh, just seeing something in chat. It is Closets. Closets. Uh, and that is on me for <laughs> the mispronunciation, but we will uh, get it right from here out. But yeah. Clausex is playing playing well this game. At the, at the start, we're only one turn in, so we'll see where what decisions are made here. As last time it was turn three with such a decisive amount of damage being thrown around, or turn two with the, such a decisive amount of damage being thrown around. The Kinu swapping in for Clausex, the Protector buff going off on Valash, Markin swapping out the Gyalis, blinking first this time with the Whip one swapping in, but Velash also swapping out for Closets as Rise swaps in. And is that a read on Markin LP's side for being prepared with this Whip Lump here? Saipat with Nicho Sai. Let's see if this is targeting down the Rise's slot, and that is going to deal a good little chunk of damage to the Rise. Wow. Uh, I've never heard somebody so excited for some uh, three switches and a little bit of HP gone from <laughs> just one turn. Uh, but it's I'm quite all excited. about the board state, Fabi. But I'm actually quite excited about Classic's uh, play as well because he managed to use uh, the Kinu Protector buff on the Valesh and then swap out the Valesh for the Rise, netting uh, Valesh the Protector buff and not the Rise. And this is uh, quite important for the later stages of the game since now the Vlash has plus one defense and plus three special defense. So he will be able to take a lot of hits from Mark and LP's side, especially uh, these hits from that Grandpa, from that uh, Whiplump. And, you know, the occasional beta burst from Kinu. And uh, basically, um, yeah, gets even then on the uh, defensive buffs. Uh, if you look at uh, Gyalis versus Vlash, uh, basically, as both now have one protector buff. On the other side, though, currently Mark and LP's sports set is just a little bit better as uh, he has two uh, water temps here facing off this rise and Cypher obviously with a toxic ink pressuring the Kino quite a bit as well. Plazek's going to switch out rise as Volaren comes in to occupy that slot. Cypat retreating and Markin switching in Grandpa for that slot. The Cold Breeze coming out from the Whip Lump and it <laughs> the freeze pressure begins as Kinu uses Stonewall on Volarin, making this Volarin even more tanky. So Classics uh, may actually not have a uh, Turbo Choreography on his Kinu. Uh, Revitalize Hypnosis uh, Stonewall and Beta Burst uh, could be the set here for Classics, and that means um, that Markin LP's uh, yeah, speed is uh, yeah, un unpart. Classics can't speed, uh, speed up his Thames in a way that Markin can. Uh, obviously, the Rise tries to mitigate a lot of this. Yeah, and right here, though. With this uh, Grandpa and Whiplump on the field, if uh, Clausex can't pressure it off, these Hypnosises and Freeze are just going to give Markin some free turns with a Hypnosis going off from the Grandpa onto the Volarin and a Beta Burst from the Kinu onto the Whiplump. And the Whiplump with a, with a Cold Breeze on the Kinu, and that's going to freeze it. 
and Mark in LP has created himself just one free turn to do whatever he wants here. Yeah, and with uh, the Whiplump catching a Rise switching previously, a Turbo Coil Refuel from Grandpa's side uh, seems very likely, and Classics can't do anything about it. Uh, as well as, obviously, that uh, Whiplump being able to yeah, attack wherever it wants. The Kinu swapping out for Klazix. Turbo Choreography, just like you called, coming out on the Grandpa with the Synergy is going to give it plus two speed. Whiplump with the Tornado onto the Rye slot. It's going to deal a nice chunk of damage, and Volaren spends the turn sleeping, and it is now alert. Yeah, can throw a Noxious Bomb the Whiplump's way uh, just for now. But. I feel like uh, Markin has the correct swap-ins here. He could just swap in the Yalis, for example. And uh, Grandpa can use Hypnosis on a slot. Yeah, Klazik swapping in with the Kinu, uh, giving another Protector buff off to the Volaren, but a Hyperkinetic Strike coming out from the Grandpa and that additional speed's going to cause it to deal 50% of Kinu's HP and a Synergized Tsunami coming out from Whiplump onto both Tims, putting out <laughs> even more freeze pressure. A Noxious Bomb coming down from the Volaren onto the Whiplump. And it's not enough to kill it though. The Grandpa still has the ability to out-hypnosis the Volaren and the Whiplump still has the ability to out-freeze the Kinu. Yeah, free city here for Markin. <laughs> and yeah, as you said, I just would expect exactly that. Uh, try this this Whiplum tries to uh, cold breathe this Kino and the Grandpa uh, tries to uh, hypnosis this Volorant. Not just though that the Rise swap ins uh, managed to set this Whiplum to even speed. So. Uh, Oh, you are right on that. You are right. You are right. So, yeah, we'll uh, see what this Whiplump is able to do. And that's like, how do you feel about Whiplumps being on a team? I just love the amount of just, they don't, they have the potential to deal damage, but I just love the amount of pressure they bring up. Just like, oh God, what's it going to do? <laughs> Whiplump is super scary and super not scary at the same time, as we can see here. <laughs> just one uh, free turn from this Volorant and it seems like the Whiplump is uh, like clinically dead already, just breathes just a little bit. Um, but then again, we have seen this uh, Whiplump do such amazing work here with, uh, with all the freezes, uh, giving Markin really a lot of room and that room used to use Turbo Choreography on the Grandpa uh, to set up some hyperkinetic strikes for the future. So, um, you know, it, it one uh, you really can't make a, a really bad move with uh, Whiplump, otherwise it would just outright die. But we can see here in Markin LP's hands, just uh, makes sure to uh, give him uh, free turns, and gives him a lot of room to set up. Kinu going to be swapped out for... Plazix, Rise coming in that spot, a third Demoralize going off on these Tims, Volaren swapping out, knowing that the potential to be outsped here with that Hypnosis is very real, the Valash coming in to take that slot, the Grandpa going to Hypnosis onto the Valash, but the Valash is holding an energy drink and says, nah, -uh, it's not bedtime yet. The Whiplump with a little bit of freeze pressure onto the Rise, but it's a whole different board state now. Yeah, and I feel like uh, Markin LP didn't accommodate for a rise pop in because suddenly uh, Grandpa is at neutral speed and uh, the Whiplump uh, is at minus one speed. And uh, this also means the Valash is now the fastest temp on the field uh, with a three priority move. Uh, maybe not with Grandpa and uh, Hyperkinetic Strike, um, but that means that uh, Markin LP set back here as previous turn looked like he was able to uh, get another free turn and suddenly uh, this next quote-unquote free turn here uh, turned against him. 
Yeah, it's such a such a dangerous it's such a dangerous time you have when you have like grandpa and whip whip flump on the field, but uh Closix has found a way out of this strategy, maneuvering himself into a position here where he can really take hold and take charge of this game. The Rise swapping out again. Kinu coming in for for Klozix with a, another Protector buff. And that Protector buff going on Velash this time. A Hyperkinetic Strike coming out from Grandpa onto Kinu, but without that additional stage of speed, it's not going to be enough to kill it. The Crystal Dust from Velash onto Wimp Plump is going to be enough to kill it. And Velash's <laughs> scavenger proccing going back up to 94% HP. And Saipat switching in uh, for Mark and LP. Yeah, we had previous game uh, the trade here, Gialis versus Velash. But uh, Classics maneuvered himself in a way where not only his Velash is now a little bit more buffed up actually than previously, um, but also Marking can't just uh, match him with his Gialis, at least at this stage of the game. Valash with the crystal spikes on the Saipat. It is going to just miss that kill. The Grandpa still being fast enough to kill this Kinu before it's able to attack him with that Saipat. The Saipat with the toxic ink on the Valash, not dealing a lot of damage, but those two ticks of poison will be able to make up a little bit of it. And uh, notice that the Valash has energy drink and therefore hypnosis, not an option here. And that also means that the Valash they were able to throw another move next turn, especially with the rise coming in here, dropping the speed. I'm loving the speed control by Klozix. Yeah, the, he, uh, this rise switch ins was so good from Klozix this game. And, uh, you know, how good they actually were, we can see here by the board state and by the current state of the game, where this Valash not only outspeeds the grandpa, and uh, everything else currently on the field, but the Cypad will be going down to something here from the Valash, and the Grandpa can't really do anything about it. Yeah, and that's just <laughs> that's a fearful area to be in. But let's not forget, in Mark and LP's back pocket, he has a Gyalis that's online and a Kinu, which is a pretty decent combo. And I feel like Markin's been very consciously playing around not letting this Valash get a speed advantage on its Gyalis, because that, like right now, it's a bad situation for Markin, but I think that's the worst situation he can be in if uh, this Valash is easily playing around the uh, Gyalis. Gyalis swapping out here for Markin, Crystal Dust from the Valash onto the Gyalis slot. Grandpa with a Hypnosis onto Rise, and that's going to be enough to put the Rise to sleep as there's nothing there to protect it. And uh, that is a turn ticket. Now, very interestingly here that the Gialis uh, will probably live at Crystal Spikes. Um, we have seen this Crystal Dust do just a little bit about damage and I uh, would fully expect uh, a Kino swap in here, and then uh, maybe a Hyto Uchi coming Valash's way. This yeah, this is really Markin's uh, only way out of this game here. Yes, he support of Grandpa with Hypnosis, but with that with minus one speed on that doesn't seem to be working quite as intended. The Kinu coming in like you called for that Gyalis, but it is going to be mopped up by that Valash as a Crystal Spikes is uh, going to take it out with one hit. The Valash overexerting to do it. A Haido Uchi coming out from the Gyalis, not outspeeding the Valash and not, not putting it to sleep because of the energy drink as the Rise spins the turn sleeping, but is now alerted. And Psypath swapped in for Markin. Classics predicting correctly here. Uh, saw the same play that I saw. Uh, swapping in the Kino uh, in marking, for marking LP. And with the Valash having Madness buff turn one, more than capable of uh, knocking out that Kino, despite it being quite uh, tanky on the special side. 
And we have seen here how much difference these defensive uh, buffs do for the Valesh as uh, he was able to tank that Haito Uchi quite well from the Gyalis. Note that the Gyalis is at plus two the uh, attack. Uh, it's quite impressive how tanky this Valash is. And suddenly, uh, yeah, this Valash is quite uh, quite the threat, quite the late game threat here. The Gyalis turning tail and swapping out for Mark and LP as the Grandpa comes in. The Quaslik, or Quaslik swapping out their Valash for Volarin to uh, come in and take the slot. A Fire Tornado coming out from the Rise onto the Grandpa uh, without huge amounts of special attack investment. That's not going to deal much of any damage. Toxic Ink from the Psypat. The poison's going to tick on it. It's not going to be enough to kill it this turn, but this is uh, signaling this Rise's final turn on the field. But speaking of the rise, I do think Classics uh, made good use of the rise and uh, is more than happy to let it go here. One thing to keep in mind is that this Volorant uh, is at uh, basically full HP and it is at plus 3 physical and plus 3 special defense. This is something we haven't seen that often that this Volorant also got buffed by a Stonewall of Kino. Uh, therefore having a lot of physical defense as well. Uh, so combined with the Valash here, that's a really scary late game for Markin as uh, yeah he faces uh, both Valash and uh, uh, the Volorant here from Kazakh's side, both set up and ready to uh, yeah sweep. That is just something nobody wants to hear <laughs> as a uh, grandpa is able to outspeed the Volarin and get a Hypnosis off. The Saipat with the Ninja Jutsu is going to be able to mop up the Rise before it gets any turn off, and the Rise is out of here. For, uh, and uh, Markin L, or rather, Klausix is going to have to swap in, I believe, that Valash here. Yep, and Valash swaps in. Is that his last two attempts? Oh, last three. Okay, he does have one more. My bad. He still has the Madrid, but uh, well, with the Valash, um, you know, there's the Cypad at minus two speed, the Grandpa at minus one speed. This Valash can just uh, uh, increase the spike, he can increase the dust, and uh, the Cypad will die. The world is asleep, to be fair, but uh, you know, the next turn. Uh, there probably won't be a side patch uh, around for Markin as uh, he needs to debate what he wants to do, maybe. <laughs> Volorin is running a pillow! <laughs> Markin LP swaps yes. out side patch. Gyalis comes in here. Crystal Dust from the Valash is going to go onto the Gyalis, dealing a nice little chunk of damage. And Grandpa um... Hyperkinetic Strike itself? Question mark? Yeah, I would uh, want to just to point out that, uh, you know, the swapping into Gyalis will prevent the uh, uh, the scavenger proc, but um, yeah, I, I don't really see that uh, not being a misclick here from uh, marking AP. I do think he was running out of time just a little bit, but uh, yeah, like, this basically should wrap it up as uh, Hyperkinetic Strike was the move to outspeed the Valash, or at least, uh, you know, damage the Valash. Sharp Stab's gonna go off, and that Crystal Spike's coming out from Valash, and that's going to hurt if that Hyperkinetic had hit. That could have been a dead Valash this turn. The Scavenger buff is going to proc, and <laughs> the uh, Grandpa's going to try its best to get that Valash dead. It's not gonna be enough damage. Noxious Bomb from Volarin. Onto the Grandpa is going to deal a good chunk of damage, um, but the Grandpa is still in here. That was, uh, well, he now for sure lost this game, especially seeing that the Vash would have died actually from the sharp steps, leaving marking LP just a little bit around, uh, more breathing room uh, to combat this Wolverine and the Madrid. The Madrid would have not been uh, a problem for Marking a play as well because the uh, Nitro Sai still available for the Cypad. 
Quaz Quazic swapping in Madrid. Grandpa with the hypnosis on the Volaren. Volaren's just going to keep sleeping and resting its head on the pillow. Psypat with a Nicho Psy onto the Madrid. It's going to 4x damage one shot it as the Blash swaps back in with an extra little turn of rest. And uh, we'll see what this Blash is able to do. Well, we will see if this. Uh, uh, yeah. Grandpa can outspeed the Valash, but not with a uh, four priority synergy. Uh, Crystal Dust. The Grandpa with the Hyperkinetic Strike onto the Valash is not going to be enough to kill it as uh, the Valash is still here. And uh, this pretty much, uh, this game is pretty much in Klausix's back pocket as uh, we'll be looking at a game three. The Grandpa with the Wind Burst outspeeding the Valash as I think the Valash opted to rest and a Noxious Bomb coming out from the Volaren onto the Grandpa, and that is it! Klausix has won Game 2 of the Finals. It is 1-1. Quite uh, interesting how it would have played out if uh, the misclick didn't happen. I do think that uh, it would be a kill on the Valash, and therefore uh, no, it would play out a little bit different actually in the last couple of turns uh, but to be fair um, this Volorant of classics was at uh, plus three plus three uh, was super healthy I had a lot of stamina left so uh, I don't think there was a lot of uh, uh, stalling uh, most of stalling from marking LP side possible yeah And uh, as, yeah, as Dan uh, just contributed, um, feel like, uh, or rather, we were pretty sure that Mark and LP ran out of time on that last turn, which is one of the reasons, like, why the hyperkinetic was, like, probably so oddly timed, which it was, like, a really tough situation, putting a lot of thought in. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Had both of those moves targeted into the Vlash, the Vlash been uh, taken out, the Psypat been able to do a little bit of something else into potentially the Volaren or, you know, still taking out the Mudred. Uh, it would have been a very, very, very different set of circumstances. But Plazix taking game two and we're going to game three. And, and uh, do I think uh, any of these uh, Tamers makes a uh, active effort to break this uh, team composition of the opponent up, as we have seen now both uh, of these tamers use the same team composition uh, twice in a row. I, yes, I feel like... We... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I feel like um, Classics, yeah, kind of has the notion that he uh, loses to Volorant uh, outright, and... Um, that uh, still might be true, uh, but in the other hand, uh, this Gyalis, uh, still a huge threat here from Markin LP's side, he was able to beat it uh, last time around, but um, still, I, I feel like uh, banning Gyalis could be a good uh, choice as well. Markin LP, first ban on the Kino, Plazix, uh first ban is again onto that Volaren as both Gyalises are open for these Tamers this go-around. And I've seen this from Klausix when I was casting games that uh, they were playing in last week. Klausix is the person who likes to play this game on hard mode. I don't think in any of the games I've casted of Klausix, I've seen them ban Gyalis. I, I feel like they always bring like a strategy to account for a Gyalis, and they always leave it open. Yeah, and uh, Markin. Volaren and Mushup picked up for uh, Klazix. Go ahead, Fabi. Yeah, Klazix uh, uh, here a little bit outplaying Markin. Markin a little bit over predicting. He thought, well, you know, I banned the Kinu and then uh, we will see probably some sort of uh, Valash start here and I can pick the Tadru in into that. But uh, Klazix here with that Volaren, with that Mushuk, and suddenly the Grandpa. Doesn't look that well equipped to deal with uh, the Volorant anymore. The uh, Stoneball or Noxious Bomb pressure from the Tadaru 
not uh, really something you can bring on here and uh, the grandpa is not able not able to capitalize on a perfect jab opening from the Tadru as well so I do think Markin MP has a very weak start here and Classics is able to uh, have a Kino or Gialis ban possible in the second ban phase. And both of those are going to be huge picks as Klazix has been hitting this Pigapack uh, ban and, well, was hitting the Pigapack ban in the uh, past game. And uh, that Gialis <laughs> being open to ban in the second stage is also a big pick for him. But Klazix going with the Pigapack ban and uh, Mark and LP, I didn't mention the ban earlier, but banned out the Rays. Klazix has no support this go around. Yeah, the race was a really good asset to Classic's team last game. So it just makes sense that Markin is banning that. And in the previous semifinals, he banned that as well in the last game, which led to a win for him. But and we're uh, going to see Markin pick up Saipat and Gyalis. Klazix has picked up Gyalis on his own team as they are debating the last two teams to pick up. Havrena Madrid, Havrena Unkama. Uh, both would be really good options. We've seen this for Lash do a lot of work in the last couple games. I feel like uh, Classics also went the pick a pick just in fear of, you know, the stall that Markin has uh, going in, on its team. Uh, for sure, this pick a pick has some sort of topography and hypnosis set up, as well as the grandpa, obviously. And with the Wisdom added in there as well, just uh, leaves no, no to just no so much stall. <laughs> in no pick a pack on either team who needs a top tier support as we go into game three of mark and lp versus closet in these finals what are we looking for fabi in this game and turn one well um i actually hope that we see tamaru doing some damage but i have bad news for you uh kennedy actually because Tyru doesn't seem to uh work out in a way that Markin wants it to do Sure, it's good against Gyalis, sure, it's good against Belash, but um, you know, not very good against Warren and Mashuk uh, per se, and uh, against Ukama neither. Uh, you know, it's okay with a Noxious Bomb, but it needs to fear a lot of uh, damage coming its way. Grandpa with the Wind Burst onto the Volaren on turn one, and Urushalol from the Mashuk onto the Teteru. Uh, with the four stats of poison and a noxious bomb, this Teteru taking a huge chunk of its HP in the opening gambit. And uh, Teteru with a perfect jab onto the Volren going to start lowering its defenses. I mean, Machina P is setting up, uh, obviously, uh, so that the Volren uh, can't replicate what it did previously. Uh, have a, a plus three physical defense. Uh, so that he can, you know, uh, do a little bit of damage with Tadru, with the Gialis as well, with the Saipet. Uh, softening it up a little bit for later uh, to be able to actually be able to deal with it. <laughs> with the Tadru here, uh, you know, with just one little hit from anything, will die to the poison ticks. And that's uh, a turn for classics that worked quite well for him. As I said, this Tadru is able to check the Valash, the Gialis, the Yukama. Uh, on paper with a storm ball with a noxious bomb uh, for the Yukama. But in reality now with such low HP, uh, these will outspeed all and this will be able to pick up kills to the Tadaru. Volaren swapping out for Klazix. Ukama coming in, occupying that slot. Grandpa with a second wind burst, dealing huge damage onto the Mushuk. Musha with an uppercut back onto Teru. Teru with a major slash going into the Ukama slot. And that's going to deal a huge amount of damage to the Ukama. Brought down to 28% HP its first turn being on the field. Yeah, but do keep in mind, this uh, Ukama is not here to uh, check something specific to uh, deal some uh, you know, key damage to anything on Markin's side. Um, you know, it's it's good, like don't get me wrong, but uh, you know a water cannon here onto the grandpa, uh, for example, um, would just be enough 
uh, for for the Sukama, enough damage for the Sukama to be worth it. Maybe just a swap from the Mashuk into a Volorant, for example, trying to mitigate a little bit of wind damage coming its way. Um, would set up uh, Klasex in a, I do think, nice position, the Yukama. As I said, not a key piece to his team, and therefore stalling out a little bit, uh, stalling out the Tadru, uh, making it so that he can uh, get enough damage on the Grandpa. Could make him, uh, could put him in a good uh, situation here. Ukama with the Aquatic World when that priority speed is going to hit into the Grandpa, dealing over half of its HP. Grandpa with the Hyperkinetic Strike going down onto the Mushuk. That is going to be enough to take the Mushuk out before it gets a move off, which means this Teteru has a second chance to attack as it uses Noxious Bomb onto the Ukama slot, and the Ukama is out of here along with that ter Teteru dying from the Poison Ticket this turn, but taking out an Ukama kind of feels worth it. Yeah, at this point, the Kama did the damage that it needed to do, but uh, that Mashuk dying was not really optimal, to say the least. Um, and now, well, Grandpa obviously still at 50% of HP, and with a Flash and a Yalis here on Classic's side, um, these times usually try to be set up in some sort of way, obviously being Madness buff and uh, he uh, Heat up. And Classics will need another turn of, yeah, something of Heat up of uh, Madness buff. Classics with Valash and Ialis coming in to take the spot. One, <laughs> like you said, one can go for Madness and one can go for uh, Heat up. Mark and LP is going to have to pick his poison of which one he kills and which one he dies by. Uh, Grandpa with Hypnosis onto the Gyalis slot, knowing that that Velash is running Energy Drink. The Gyalis only going to be asleep for one turn. The Velash getting its Madness buff off, upping its attack, or its special attack. Psypat with Toxic Ink onto the Velash. That's going to be a couple poison ticks, and the Gyalis is awake and alert. Alert indeed, but the Cypad here is in a very good spot. Uh, a Nature Sai in the Valash spot will hit either the Valash and the Valash will die. There's no defensive buffs on the physical side here for the Valash. And if Classics tries to uh, play around that, so in the Volorant, the Volorant is at minus one defense, so it will take a huge amount of damage as well. So this spot in Mark of Mark and LP here now very good. Uh, and I expect this turn to yeah, be very good for him uh, as a second uh, good turn in a row. Do you see yeah. a turbo choreography at all coming out from this grandpa? I mean, uh, we probably might see a switch. We, we might see a... Uh, oh, we're strike. going to see a hyperkinetic strike from the grandpa onto the Velash. The Velash with the crystal spikes onto the grandpa, and that is the grandpa's life as... This Psypat chooses to go with the Nicho Psy onto the Velash slot. Is that going to be enough to kill it? And that Velash is out of here. The Gyalis has one <laughs> turn and heats up, and uh, the Gyalis is online. It is the last of it's the last two of Klausik's Tims. The last two Tims holding them in this tournament. Yeah, we're really making sure here from Arkin LP's side that this Valash is dead with the Hyperkinetic Strike as well going into that slot. And uh, yeah, it might just not have been necessary, but just might have been because of the scavenger buff, obviously. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the Valash would be quite healthy with the Hyperkinetic yeah, Strike that's there. The last thing you want to see is just a Valash clinging on with like. 5% HP, getting a scavenger buff, getting back in there, and then your just whole world is turned upside down. So, uh, yeah, the Skial is now able to uh, heat up uh, for Markin as well. Markin's Gyalis with the heat up, like you said, the Crystal Bite coming out from Klausix's Gyalis and the Toxic Plume from the Volarin with the synergy is going to lower the attack of Markin's Gyalis and uh, the Psypat. Psypat with a Toxic Ink onto the, the Gyalis on 
Classic's his side, and uh, overall, that's a pretty great turn for Classic's. Yeah, his uh, yeah has got the uh, heat up here on the last turn, and therefore has uh, yeah the advantage in uh, at least uh, considering the Gyalysis. Sharp Shops. stabs coming out from Markin's Gyalis and sharp stabs coming out from Closets's Gyalis, and that is going to kill uh, Gyalis as Saipat with the Nicho Sai is going to target down this Volarin, and uh, that is going to be enough to take the Volarin out as it is two Tims. Oh, and such a huge overexertion to do that. Two Tims versus one Tim as this Wimplump comes out. It's got Cold Breeze, we know. It could try and just slowly chip this guy Alice down. One thing we haven't talked about is that sweat band on classic Gyalis. And uh, yeah, this literally solidifies here the deal. I do think it's the last two attempts for uh, marking a, a P, but the Gyalis will be able to attack the next two turns. And yeah, the guy Alice. It is not. Yeah, the guy Alice with the crystal bite on Whiplump. It's got to target down the Whiplump here. The sharp stabs does not outspeed the tornado as the Whiplump uh, gets it off, dealing huge amounts of damage to the guy Alice. The guy Alice with the sharp stabs onto the Whiplump. The Whiplump is out of here. Does the Psypat overexert with the Nicho side to kill the guy Alice? It doesn't have to because the guy Alice overexerted on its own. And the Toxic not going to be enough to kill the guy Alice, but the Psypat didn't overexert to do it. Yeah, this and is a... The signature move from Psypat coming out. It counters guy Alice. This is why you run Psypat as game three goes to Markin LP. Making yeah. Markin LP the winner and champion of the Temporium Weekly number 10. Congratulations to Markin LP and yeah, very well played and we have seen it was very close uh, in all games uh, actually and uh, in the end I do feel like with, uh, with that one good uh, turn uh, he set him up for the win and you know, uh, Classic was able to come back and you know, uh, ride a little bit on this uh, free heater from the Gialis but in the end uh, it was not enough and it came down to the 2% uh, percent of HP that this Whiplum uh, was able to hang on to uh, so you know that could just be a little bit of attack tvs that were missing on the gyalis side uh, just a little bit too much hp investment on the whiplum side and uh, yeah that basically decided the game yeah and what a uh, great match right there and i think one of the reasons closets is able to play so well around gyalis is Closex has excellent speed control, uh, not in the use of turbo choreographies, but in the use of demoralizes and reading those great swaps. And when Markin was able to take that rise out of Closex's hands, just uh, that whole game had a whole different flow as any speed adjustments. Like well, I was sitting on the edge of my seat of like waiting for a turbo choreography of just like the second, you know, Markin was able to exert pressure, he put the pressure where it needed to be and uh that it was just very 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 good play to watch yeah a good summary here is uh you know both of these players weren't really in a spot where they could really safely turbo choreography without giving up uh tempo without giving up the advantage and uh yeah this uh yep the last game was very interesting in a way that uh, Markin actually swapped out, uh, swapped up his uh, bands. Actually, you know the Gyalis was banned previously, and uh, now suddenly not only the Gyalis, which is a really powerful uh, pick here from Classics, was open, but also the Sweat Band, putting a lot of uh, yeah value just on this Gyalis. It still wasn't enough, uh, just. Uh, uh, shows you the uh, the power that uh, and and the preparation that Markin uh, put in there and uh, yeah how he played it as well. The Skialis was not able to come out until the very last stages of the game, and at this point was a little bit too late. Yeah, and um, again, I, I the l last little thing I want to ping on about that game: there were no top tier supports in there. Kino didn't get picked, and then on. On 
Classics aside, both Rays and Kinu were banned out. So it's a very like fun game to watch and just how the tamers had to play around not having that general fallback swap option of you know of what kinu and rise brings so makes me just very excited for the future of like the meta and how like cool this game is and everything developing and how much like picks and bands add to it um yeah. everybody stick around we've got uh more Temtem content coming to you as we are going to be raiding another stream uh, this has been the Temporium Weekly number 10. Did you want to uh, give any parting thoughts, Dan, or Dan, uh, Bobby, before uh, before we sign off? Yeah, I uh, I just wanted to say, well, we have seen, uh, you know, we have a little low uh, participant count, but it's not all hypnosis spam. It's not all like only uh, Chanky Gialis. Um, and I feel like there is a lot to yeah develop and discuss and um, come up with still in the meta and if uh, one, you one of you, the viewers one of you actually feel like up for the task uh, make sure to come in here on saturdays um yeah to show your skill to show your uh, team building and maybe beat out one of these uh, top uh, contestants here so make sure to follow uh, us on discord where there will be the announcement for the tournaments and future uh, tournaments as well obviously yeah type exclamation point discord in the chat to get the link to the temporium discord keep up with the tournaments next week we will have fellow tamers uh tourney as our tournament as it will be a cash tournament lots of tamers are going to be entering that we're going to see some great tim tim action i've been prez b kennedy joined by fabi Thank you everybody for watching today and stick around in the channel as we will be uh, rating 